Good morning, party people. Ah, good audio's working. Howdy, folks. Ah, uh, good, good, vi good vibes. Thank you. <coughs> so I have asthma. So whenever I uh, start talking out of nowhere, like I haven't talked for hours, all of a sudden I'll cough. Um, and I cough at other times too, but it's just always funny that I don't talk before I come on screen. I don't talk before I come on camera. So I'm walking all over the house, getting all kinds of things done. And then I start talking and I immediately cough. I'm like, oh, come on, what's up with that? Uh, G. Certain, good afternoon, good morning, and evening to everyone around in different time zones. Spitfire, good to see you again from the uh, UK as well. And then we had Honey from India showed up uh, too early, just uh, getting started. So this morning's goal, I don't know if you, <laughs> Pete says, wow, perfect timing for lunch, sitting outside in the Scottish sun sunshine. I have never been to Scotland. I mean, I've been into like Wales and I want to say I crossed the border into Scotland a couple of times, but nothing like staying extended times. And I've always wanted to. I adore, as, as Americans, we all adore the idea of Ireland and Scotland. Just the and I have the same thing for me with Wales. Just the, a lot of those kind of rolling countryside type things, and y'all's amazing accents. The accents are so beautiful. Oh, Santi, you're too kind. Thank you. Yeah, Jamie Surgeon. Well, it's probably because he's he's drunk. That's that's how, probably how that works. Uh, but so I'm wearing uh, one of my favorite hats from one of my favorite places on earth, the Isle of Man. Surly Dev, uh, good to see you from the UK as well. Uh, so Isle of Man, just absolutely adore. And the first, so I got to go there for a client, which I just love this client too. Uh, but I got to go there for a client, and I never would have gotten over there uh, for want for just for other reasons. But it was gorgeous, and it reminded me of like a mini Ireland or Scotland. Uh, Yasi, you're absolutely right. And David, I, I agree with you. At some point, I will. Pete says, get over here. I was tempted to head up to Iceland. I've been to Iceland uh, twice now, I think. We went for a week, no, 10 days, uh, two years ago. Went for two days in 20, two, like two days, two, uh, uh, we went for 10 days and then we went for uh, a month. We went for a month earlier this year and left just during the quarantines. Uh, I wish, we, I still, every single day, every single day, every single day, I wonder what it would have been like to stay in Iceland uh, instead of coming back home to the United States because it was just so interesting. I got PWT once. I wonder what PWT is. Sounds like a disease. Could be kind of scary there. I'm a little worried about that. Uh, Czech Republic, another gorgeous uh, place. Yossi says, what's your opinion on subqueries versus CTEs? Generally speaking, they optimize out roughly the same. Like you can do the two and they'll produce an equivalent query plan. It's just that the more complex your query... Ha! <laughs> oh, that's funny. I believe that for a mile, man. Um, the, the the more complex your query gets, SQL Server tries an execution plan and then it'll keep trying more execution plans as it tries to optimize your query. But the way that you write it can choose which can influence which execution plans it chooses first. So that's that's why it can end up making more of a difference. It's less about which one's better, subqueries versus CTEs. It's more about in different situations. Yeah, y Yossi, that's a great way of saying it. It's just for me, it's mostly readability. I prefer CTEs because they feel more easy to write to me. Plus, I can copy paste them a little easier in between queries. But um, certainly, Dev, about the, the wall of rain too thing. One of my other favorite things about Isle of Man is that you can get great wet weather gear in Isle of Man. Cheap, because people buy so much wet weather gear over there. They actually get good. Here in San Diego, California, we don't get any good wet weather gear. So I love going and buying wet weather gear in uh, Iceland, Isle of Man, all that kind of thing. Um, Ooh, Janice, are you, so you're getting table spools. Odds are, it depends on what the table spools are. Hover your mouse over the table spool and look at the sort and see what it's sorting by. You can index for that. Wilfred, I absolutely do need a Stroop waffle. Oh, man, I would just completely oh. love a Stroop waffle, especially with fresh espresso in here. You know, you set the Stroop waffle over the coffee. For those of you who haven't had a Stroop waffle yet, even in the ones that you get from the store, if you just go buy a package of Stroop waffles, Stroop waffles are these little cakes, or not cakes, they're like crackers with uh, caramel in between two layers. The key is that you set it on top of a hot cup of coffee, and then it just warms them up uh, perfectly. Oh, so good. Just ridiculous. Mm. 
Abused sysadmin. Oh, I love that name. Abused sysadmin says, I've been able to make a huge difference in execution plans by manipulating CTEs. I agree. And uh, that really it's the case with any kind of query, right? Like when someone brings you a query to uh, tune, often they just didn't know what they were doing when they were writing it. It wasn't their fault. They copy pasted a bunch of stuff from different, it's like a Frankenstein query that they assembled from lots of pieces. And by rewriting it into a more elegant way, you can change what SQL Server knows about it. Yasi says, what is this morning's drink? Straight espresso, just espresso. Um, I, I don't need espresso to be energetic. I wake up and I'm just like, ta-da, you know, no alarm or anything like that. On the flip side, you don't want to be around me at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. in the afternoon. David says, any news uh, when you, oh, San, Santi, I'm actually, a friend of mine is working on that. A friend of mine is working on that. Eric Darling is actually working on a course with that. Uh, so keep your eyes tuned. We'll see what happens. David says, any news on when we in the UK can join your courses? Obviously, with my, my Isle of Man hat on, it's always near and dear to my brain, literally. Uh, so part of doing my classes over streaming, I, I don't do public classes over Twitch, but the private classes that I do uh, are all in... Uh, <laughs> yeah, No, that is not an Americano. This is just espresso. Uh, the, the private classes that I do, I'm using a private streaming provider, uh, the mux.com. But my goal is so that I could get rid of GoToWebinar and WebEx and those kind of things. I'm not happy with they treat the way they treat your data over. Uh, good morning, Jedi Mind Gorilla. The way they treat your uh, data over GDPR, and I don't want to sell anything to the UK or to the, just the EU in general until I can be confident that when you pull the right to be deleted lever, that your data is gone and that I don't have to lift a finger. Like I don't want to just be tolerant with the letter of the law. I want to be tolerant with the spirit of the law. I want you to be able to vamoose out of the systems really quickly. Um, so like I want to set a good example for how good we treat your data. And I'm just not confident that we can be there yet. Streaming was a lot closer, made it a lot closer. Jedi My Grill says, I missed the last one, but in my defense, I was sleeping and I'm okay with that. I am too. You, so, you know, really the reason why I'm streaming now, it's, you know, 5, 13 a.m. on Memorial Day, which is a holiday out in the United States. The reason why I'm streaming now is my wife doesn't wake up until around 8 or 9 a.m. <laughs> Surly Dev, you would have to change your name, Surly Dev, not your real name, but at least like your nickname. Uh, Hannibal asked a question earlier and it scrolled past. Hello and greetings from France. Bonjour. There's a friend of mine, I'm not a friend of mine, an American chef who did a show in France and she goes, uh, uh, bonjour, y'all. And I always think of that. Uh, Paula Dean, for those of you in the U.S. Hello and greetings from France. How, tell us how you feel about the adoption of SQL database within your customers. Zero. Absolutely none. However, having said that, people come to me when they're having performance problems and they've hit a wall. So if you were a, an Azure advocate, what you would say is, well, Brent, it's because in Azure there aren't any performance problems and they don't need your help. And I'd be like, uh, I, don't, I don't know that I really believe that. But what I do see is the, the kinds of clients who come to me usually have already like grown their hardware as hard as they possibly can. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Uh, so they've already grown their hardware as high as they possibly can, and they're still hitting performance bottlenecks. The clients that I have, I have actually sent people to Azure, like software vendors, people who have one database per client. And I've said, you've, look, you've got hundreds of databases. You're not doing a good job of managing all of them. They're not high performance. They're not like individually, they're not really that bad. Why don't you just put them all in Azure SQL DB? And then that way you can size databases differently per client. If somebody wants super high performance, you can move them to a larger you know, hardware size type thingy, um, you know, turn up their performance quota. So it, in terms of me doing active performance tuning on Azure SQL DB, absolutely zero. Uh, but I push people into there when their needs just weren't that high. Am I saying that Azure SQL DB is slow? Not at all. It's just that the kinds of people who hire me usually have applications that do cross joins, across database joins. They join across several databases, which is a no-go in Azure SQL DB. Yossi, you're... You'll see, you may or not be watching me in the mirror. That's really intriguing. I have, this is going to sound so baller, in my master bathroom, I have a TV built into the mirror. 
I, I didn't build it that way. It just came this way in this apartment. But when you're in the bathroom, there's you hit a button and the TV and the mirror goes on. And so you can watch the morning news while you're taking a shower or whatever. I'm like, that makes no sense to me. Because the, the bathroom, Yossi saw it in a hotel recently. The bathroom, I, I want a break. Can there be one place in the world where I don't get bad news? Do I really need bad news while I'm in the bathroom? You know, and it's not like, I mean, I could put on the Animal Planet or you know, something uh, fun and friendly, I suppose, if I want. Oh, good. Glad you're Hi, Mark. Glad you're liking him. Uh, thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. From Tasmania. So this morning's coding. This morning's, <laughs> I assume it's one way. I don't actually know. Oh, the reflection behind me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, so here you kind of get a feel for my office there. That's the downtown uh, San Diego. Obviously, the sun hasn't risen yet. Usually, the sun rises here around this time of year, around 6 a.m. So you'll see that rise throughout the course of the day. We'll change camera angles here in a second when I start coding, though. So my goal for today. So tomorrow, I teach a class called Fundamentals of Parameter Sniffing. And in Fundamentals of Parameter Sniffing, one of the things that I talk about are the things that will clear parts of your plan cache and cause you problems. Well, one of those things is when stats get updated on a table. When stats get updated on a table, it invalidates the plans in the cache that refer to that table, or those objects is a better way of saying it with statistics. Well, SP Blitz first should tell you about that. SP Blitz first is my stored procedure that I want to run first whenever there are performance issues. Like the very first thing that I'll go do is go jump in and run SP Blitz first. That'll tell me what's going on on the server right now. Well, I can find out when statistics were recently invalidated or when statistics were recently updated. And then that'll tell me which plans cleared from the cache. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to write a, a new check for SP Blitz first that I'll be able to show in tomorrow's training class on fundamentals of parameter sniffing. It's funny, when you teach stuff, it forces you to write things that you've always wanted to write. So what you're going to see me do is you're going to see me work in SP Blitz first. But before I do that, I'm going to write a proof of concept query to see when were statistics last updated. And then I'm going to need to expand that so that it also checks across all databases. So I'll, let's jump in, and I'll show you how it works. So the first thing that I'm going to go do is I'm going to go try to write a query that shows me when statistics were recently updated on each object, like each table, each index, and so forth. So let's switch over to the Stack Overflow database. I'm using the big monster. I should probably use a smaller Stack Overflow database here uh, just because I'm going to be updating statistics and rebuilding stuff. So let's say select star from sysindexes. So sysindexes is a system table that will give you out uh, all of the indexes in a database, including the ones that ship with like Microsoft's own stuff. Well, I want to see when the stats were updated on each of these. When I'm doing spelunking like this, if I don't know the DMV that I'm looking for, I really love just trying to use autocomplete. So like saying select star from sys statistics. And there isn't anything. Well, what about stats? Is there anything like sys stats? And there is a sys stats in here. Let's go see what has inside of him. There's no date. There's a bunch of stuff, but there's not a date in terms of when he was last updated. All right, so if autocomplete isn't going to help me out, there's another thing that I can do. Select star from sys all objects. All objects is a DMV that shows you all uh, uh, stored procedures, functions, views, everything. So I can say where name like stat. And let's go see if we get anything that might help. And we'll go order by type desk name. Type desk is the type of description or the object that it is. So it looks like we've got some internal tables here, but they appear to relate to query store. Coming a little down, we have uh, system stored procedures. We have uh, table valued functions like DMDB stats properties. I don't know that that goes back in time. I don't know how far back that goes. Let's go copy that and dump that into Google because I don't think. 
Um, so sys properties, and let's look at the version up at the time. There's nothing up at the version. Okay, all right. Does it give me the stats? Yes. Oh, <laughs> gives me stats last updated. As a side note, too, you might be saying, Brent, why don't you just Google for how do you tell when stats were last updated? Well, when you're writing software, especially open source software from scratch, you don't want to copy paste things off other people's blogs or websites unless you know what the rights are on those scripts. It's very dangerous to copy copyrighted stuff. Thank you for the follow, uh, 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 Silence. Oh, it's not showing my overlays. Let me go uh, th show my overlays inside there. There we go. That works better. Uh, and I should move that up above my camera so that it pops up. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, so there that goes. So I got this uh, DMV here, sis, uh, whatever it was, blah, 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 blah. Let's go grab this, copy. Oh, look at you down here. Oh, look at you. Oh. Ooh. All right, so we got some other stuff inside here. Sys objects, sys stats. Let's go copy. Dan Dita, do I take questions from chat? No. Oh, see how I did that? I just I, I took a question from chat. Yeah, absolutely. Fire away. Feel free. Uh, as long as it's related to whatever it is that we're uh, talking through. Okay, so there we go. So we have... <laughs> Y'all like that, huh? <laughs> none of that. None of that. Uh, so this will go through and give me a bunch of objects here. Does it show anything about my user tables? Aha! Uh -huh. Here's the user's table, and it looks like the last time. Uh, Dandita, yes, you're the only one. Uh, so, the, so the thing is, in terms of ORMs, and I'm going to say this because any time I get the chance, hold on a second. Anytime I get the chance to say this to database administrators, I say this. Here's the deal with ORMs. ORMs are object relational mapping tools like uh, Entity Framework, Link to SQL, and so forth. Um, and hibernate. ORMs get you paid. That isn't some kind of joke about ORMs write crappy SQL and they help you, help you tune them. ORMs help developers. Developers are the people who do the work, remember. Developers ship lots of features quickly. It's the faster that you can ship features, the more you can get money brought in internally and you can get paid. Your company pays you when customers give, uh, give uh, money. So thanks, Rafal, for the follow. So your customers, your people pay you money whenever you ship features. You never hear customers go, you know what I really want is I want an application that only uses stored procedures. I want, uh, that's my big part of my purchasing process. No, hell no. All they really care about is they want to make sure that they get features shipped as quickly as possible. If you told your developers, you're never allowed, this is the noise that all DBAs make. Even the, even the women make the same exact noise. You're never allowed to use ORMs again. You have to write all your queries by hand, in stone, on stored procedures. You just go over there. If you all of a sudden lay down that law and they turn to the keyboard and start writing T-SQL, you think it's going to be good? You think it's going to be good, T-SQL? You think it's going to go fast? No, hell no. Especially because your company doesn't have any money. Your company doesn't have any money for training at all. That's why you're here, because you ain't got no money for training. <laughs> yeah? You're here on Twitch, because you're broke as all hell. That's not really true. Maybe you're, maybe it's true. I don't know. Uh, Jedi Mind Gorilla. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's very cool. Jedi Mind Gorilla, if you want me to record an alert for that, shoot me an email at help at brenozar.com, and I will totally record, an e uh, record a wave for that. Um, Dandita says, the thing is, I'm developing an ORM is getting in the way of me doing the nap. Dude, you can't even type with punctuation. You can't even use punctuation and capitalization, and you're going to blame an ORM? Oh, my God. If your T-SQL looks like what you type in, come on now. Come on now. That's not even close. It's not even fair. Should have moved this thing over before I started. So hopefully that, uh, that uh, lays down that law. So I'm a huge fan of ORMs because they get us paid as quickly as possible. And then we can go on to tuning. Whenever a thing doesn't perform, we can go, all right, look, now this is the part we're going to go promote up into, uh, into a stored procedure or up into dynamic SQL or however it is that we love to do it. 
y'all, those of y'all who love Clippy, I'll uh, I'll tell you, you've got something amazing coming. Um, there's some really there's some really slick stuff that I'm working on with my good friend Clippy. Okay, so now back over to this thing over here. Oh, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. And I, I, I love giving. I love Dandita. Welcome to the club. We've seen you before in here, too. When somebody says they've got like four CPU cores, I'm always like, oh, you mean like my iPad? Yeah, you mean like my iPad that I carry around? This thing has eight cores, but okay, that's all right. That's cool. All right, so back over here, we got sysdmdb stats properties. This appears to give me what I want in terms of last updated. So now what I need to do is I want to, <laughs> nice flex. I want to find out these, just the stuff that was last, that was recently updated. So there was a filter on here when I first cut this out, but what Books Online was, was doing was they were saying where modification counter is greater than something. I don't care about that. What I am concerned about is where last updated is greater than a specific date. Damn it, Microsoft, why don't you fully prefix everything that you've got up here in the, in the object list? They should fully prefix this. Let's do SP last updated, and I believe that's SP modification counter. Uh, where SP last updated is greater than then date add, uh, let's see here, minutes, I think is min, this might be MI. Um, I'll, things in the last 15 minutes, get date. So let's go see, all right, good. So now we have a query that shows us what stats were updated in the last 15 minutes, and it's not reply, or, uh, um, showing anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rebuild an index. I'm gonna say alter table, DBO users, rebuild. So that when it re, oops, I'm going to even spell rebuild correctly. What the hell? Um, I'm going to do alter table rebuild so that it does update stats. Then let's go in and look at that select and oh, fantastic, absolutely wonderful. Stepped off and adjusted my lights there. Um, so now that's absolutely fantastic. Now I have something that shows me stats that were updated in the last 15 minutes. I want the name to be a little cleaner. I want to show the table and uh, or the database, the table, the index, and the time that it was updated, maybe even the number of rows that it had in it. Um, Spencer says, no, not to interrupt you, the hell you think you just did, uh, but did, do you have any content about extended events? No, huh? Uh, are they awesome? Yes, absolutely. I just don't focus my training on that. For training on that, go to Pluralsight. Pluralsight has a bunch of content about extended events, and it's cheap as hell. It's uh, I don't know, it's like a hundred bucks a year or something like that, and all kinds of stuff on extended events. So I would totally go there. Um, surely, Dev, I need to remember not to listen to Brent with headphones on. That's probably too loud too. Let me turn down. I'm going to turn down the the cheering and all that. Let's move that down a little bit further. Uh, Yossi says, do you use a SQL formatter? I don't, only because I often jump from one client to machine to the other, and because I use Azure Data, uh, Azure Data Studio when I normally do my development work. Um, however, I'm not using it here, only because I try to meet people where they're at. Like most of y'all use Management Studio. If any of you, you oh, ha <laughs> thoroughly Dev says it was me. Um, if any of you use Azure Data Studio, as part of your regular work, say something in the chat like I use Azure Data Studio just because I always look for a feeling of how many people use that versus Management Studio. Actually, y'all, over in the chat, say whether you use Azure Data Studio or Management Studio when you're writing T-SQL. I'll give you 10 seconds to give me a rough rundown of which one of those two you use so that I can keep an eye. MySQL Workbench. One. Yeah, so most of you are on SSMS. And Yossi says, I don't use Azure Data Studio, but I'd be interested to see it. What I'll do, and I've, uh, several people have said in the in the chats that they wanted to see Azure Data Studio in a, one of these streams. I'll work on that in uh, one of my next ones. The thing is, I usually use it with like a big 4K monitor. My, but folks are saying MySQL Workbench. The thing, tri the trick is here, of course, we're using Microsoft SQL Server, so it's not MySQL Workbench. But um, you know, T SQL is kind of the same universally all over the world. 
Um, Botsko says some resources on how to use it. See, that's, a, that's the trick with Azure Data Studio. There aren't a lot of resources yet because it's brand spanking new. It's freaking, well, I say brand spanking new. It's like a year old. Um, but it is uh, changing so fast, like they're evolving it so quickly, that there aren't a lot of really good resources on how to use it yet. Santi, I'm glad you repeated that. I'm going to talk about that. I, I'll, I'll take a second to talk about that. Um, so there aren't a lot of good resources on how to use Azure Data Studio yet. I happen, I, it's, it's worth it to me to figure it out just because I've spent about half my time in Postgres and half my time in SQL Server. So it feels like it's the, just the ultimate perfect tool for me. Now, the way, reason we got here is one of you asked about my code formatting choices. If I used SSMS, I would use Redgate's SQL Prompt. Because I use that for years, and I even remember the reformatting. Control K, Control Y reformats your T SQL with Redgate SQL Prompt. It's wonderful. It's really nice. Gives you nice automatic join completions. I want to say it's about five hundred bucks though, and the licensing is a little tricky. Like it's licensed per machine that you're on. Um, they have a phone home licensing thing, which is a pain in the rear for me because I jump all the time from machine to machine and VM to VM. But if I had a real job instead of a consultant, then and if I stuck with the same laptop every day, I would buy Redgate SQL Prompt immediately. It's fantastic. Um, so Santi asks, what was the ideal expected time interval for refreshing stats? Me personally, I like it weekly. The reason I like it weekly is that whenever you update stats, it frees the plan cache for objects that have those uh, indexes in them, indexes, tables, stats, whatever in them. Um, I don't want my plan cache to be unpredictable. I want my plan cache to be very predictable. And I know people who update their uh, stats every single night, and guess what happens when they come into work in the morning? All their plan cache has gone to hell in a handbasket, and they're having all kinds of parameter sniffing problems. They're the ones causing the parameter sniffing problems. And we talk about that in tomorrow's class, Fundamentals of Parameter Sniffing. So now I got this query up here that will at least go give me the stats that were updated in the last 15 minutes. Let's also get the database name. I'm going to try to build it into a nice string because here's what I want it to say. I want it to say Stack Overflow 2010 uh, DBO users uh, and then whatever the PK or index, we'll say it like this, index PK users ID was updated on YYYMMDD with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So this is what I want the warning to tell people inside of SP Blitz first. This is the string I need to manufacture. Let's go do that. So to get the database name, we're going to go say DB name. So there's that. And then we'll say object name is going to be the table name. We know this already. Then we also need the schema. Uh, so I'm going to need, where's the schema out of sysobjects? I want to say it's schema name, uh, object, schema ID. Oh, beautiful. OK. So let's see here. I don't need the object ID. I don't need the stat. I'll take the stat name. Yeah, sure. Uh, SP stat last updated. I don't need modification counter. I would like to get the number of rows in it. 385 a user. Yeah, uh, uh, Mackle says uh, still a bit for something SSMS should, should provide. It does. It's just that SSMS's version of it is really distasteful. So now I can assemble these together. Autobots unite. Now I can say, I'm going to quote name these so that I get the nice little uh, brackets around them. So quote name is something, just so that y'all see, for those of you who haven't seen quote name before, quote name is a function that will help me out when I have objects with spaces in them. So if I said, select quote name, do, 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 uh, my special table. If I do that, SQL Server will automatically bracket around it for me. So I'm going to say because some you're going to sooner or later in your life you're going to run into uh, you're going to run into problems where the, there are objects with spaces in them. Wilfred, I missed your comment on YouTube. He said auto update stats is not recommended by you. Oh, it is. It totally is. I love auto update stats, but I just update once a week manually. And as long as I'm updating once a week, that should prevent most of the problems of it updating a stat in the middle of the day.
Um, Yossi was going to say, I was just going to say, this concatenation is going to be messy. Yes, it is. Quote name plus, do do do, plus, quote name. DevArt's SQL complete, exp exp complete Express is free. Yeah, well, I generally find the stuff that's for free is roughly worth what you pay for it. It's nowhere near as cool as Redgate SQL Prompt. And for me, 385 isn't that big of a deal. I'm an American, so our wages here are a little weird compared to the rest of everybody in the US. Yeah, we make a lot of money, but our expenses are insane. And as you may know from the news, we have to buy our own health care and things like that. Look, we haven't figured it all out yet. We've got some work here to do. Um, uh, Vassal says concat. Yeah, I don't think concat goes all the way back to SQL Server 2008. Not 100% sure, but I don't think concat goes back to 2008. Um, let's go take a quick look. Uh, so SQL Server, Server concat. So the, boy, if it's at W3 schools, it almost always goes, woo, gather PL, thank you. I appreciate that. That's very cool. Uh, I need to move that up a little bit higher too, that alert box, so that it gets the whole thing inside there. Oh, Yossi says, why does 2008 matter? And Vassal says, yeah, 2012. No, because I do, I try to support uh, SQL Server 2008 all the way back to 2008. SP Blitz and SP Blitz First, all those things should work all the way back to 2008. And there are still a lot of people who support. 2008. So thanks for following the one, Lucas. Welcome to the club. So let's see here. Concat quote name schema. Let's I don't have to retype that. I've already got it down here. Schema name. Doo, doo, doo. Uh, so we got that plus n plus Dian Dian uh, Dia, Dia says what's the purpose but n before the string that means Unicode so that I if I'm doing Unicode type work because some of your tables are going to be Unicode uh, this what table names schema names object names etc can be Unicode you can use emojis in there all kinds of stuff this just makes sure that I don't lose any fidelity as I go through and concatenate variables together uh, so quote name uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, object name doo -doo -doo. Uh, why is my shift not working worth a damn here today? So there's that guy. So that's perfect. There's our object name now, plus an uh, index, and then quote name, and we'll call it statistic. It's not uh, Paresh. Oh, Paresh, good to see you. Oh, I like Paresh. Paresh is wonderful. Uh, I like you. You're a good person, a very good person. You're friendly, upbeat, always nice to see you at uh, events. And I hope I get to see you. <laughs> My keyboard took a shift on him. Um, Surly Dev, I'm pretty sure you can use a, a poop emoji for a temp table. Um, let's go fire open Chrome and go find out. Uh, so I don't want, I'm going to close out of a whole bunch of stuff here just to make sure it doesn't do my music. Uh, poop emoji. Uh, to do 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 pile of poop emoji. Uh, let's see if it if I get you know I might not be able to because of the uh, I'm not gonna go there. Copy. Let's try it just to see. Paste. Okay. So create table. Boom. As uh, id int. <laughs> no. So much for that. So much for that. You can use ASCII stuff like a shrug, but okay. So back over on this thing. Uh, da 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 da. I, Kalesh, I don't understand your question. Ask your question again, but try to rephrase it in a different way. Uh, so, and this actually is an index. I need to change this to a statistic. Uh, do, 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 quote name, stat name. Uh, whoops, I need a plus sign there. Plus, quote name, stat name. Plus, uh, was update, was updated on. Plus, uh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> that's, that's pretty nice, Gawabunga. I like that. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, Windows in SSMS. I don't even know what you're doing. Oh, you're doing, you're doing, win I bet, though you, uh, Twitch, uh, uh, JWK, I bet what you're doing is you're typing in like a hex code or something. Um, the problem is I'm, I'm not going to go that far off topic just because I know if I go in down that rat hole, it's going to trigger all kinds of other demos. So, but you all are welcome to like put in your T-SQL that you want to, that you want to share with each other on how to test stuff like that. Drop table. Uh, so let's see here. Was last updated on, and now just to keep it, I'll put the plus on the end there. Uh, I need to format that. I want to format the last updated date because if I do it right now, 
Um, yeah, I can't just concat uh, the the date time piece, so I got to convert that. I could just do cast dump as date time, but the problem with doing that is I don't necessarily get the format. Oops, that's not, come on, you moron. It's not as date time. It's as Envercare, let's say, 50. Um, the problem with casting as Envercare is I'm not going to get the format that I want. So we're getting really close. I got lucky there, and I got the format that I want because I actually get YYMMDD. Um, so Botsko says is format okay to use. I've read that it is slow. Really, it depends on where you use a function. Like if you use things like functions in a where clause, they can be slow. Generally speaking, when you're selecting things on the way out the door, the, right, surly dev, exactly. So I used cast just because I end up using it for all kinds of strings. But what I was showing here is that if you just do cast, you don't get to pick the date time format. And I would rather do, pick the specific date time format that I want. So to do that, SQL Server cast convert date. Books Online is actually phenomenal here. Books Online. I, and I poop on. Oops. I poop on Microsoft a lot. Like I, I give them all kinds of a hard time because to some extent they can take it. Nobody else out there is really giving them a hard time. However, Microsoft's efforts on documentation are phenomenal, are just amazing uh, because those folks, may, I tell you what, anytime you want to copy paste things out of the syntax, it's Books Online is great. Um, I especially jumping back and forth between Microsoft SQL Server and uh, uh, MySQL, Postgres, all these other ones. The documentation's all over the map. You know, you have to go to all kinds of third-party sites. So y'all, several of y'all are saying there's an ISO date time format too. So anytime I can preach this to people, there's like one correct. Surly Dev says it's getting lighter in San Diego. Yes, getting a little nicer out there. Um, so anytime I can get people to use like the one good date format, I love showing them this XKCD comic. So if I search for XKCD date format, uh, XKCD has this really good uh, format tool, or uh, format tool, what the hell, I'm jumping, my mind is still back over there in, uh, still back over there in date formatting. So this is the public, the one public way to write a correct date format. So now let's go ahead and get our uh, stuff in that format. So we'll switch. Whoops, I still need Books Online, actually. I need Books Online to go get me the formatting for that for 8601. So it is, this is 8601. Do do do. Uh, 80, I don't know why I said to do do instead of just putting it out there. So this is the one with no spaces and a T for time zone formatting. I don't actually like using that with the no spaces. I prefer using a space in between the time zones. Uh, so Jedi Mind Gorilla, yeah, it, it does make a difference. Uh, so I instead, I prefer this one, which is the ODBC canonical when I'm showing it to human beings. Just because it doesn't have, it, this one doesn't have spaces, this one does have spaces. Plus, the date time format, I want it to be in the uh, server's local time zone. So I'm going to say 121. So cast 121, do, 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 do. Uh, cast or convert. Hi, hello. Cast, uh, and it is Envercare 50. Uh, SP last updated, and then the style was, what did I say it was? 121. 121. So let's see what we get here with this one. And so this is okay. It stopped returning rows because it's been more than 15 minutes. I'm just going to change this to 150 minutes and then copy. And let's see what we get. Yes, I will take it. Mm. I'm out of espresso. It's time to go fix that. Okay, so oh, and I also need the number of rows. Now, I also want to get the number of rows in an object. Now, this is where it's going to start to get tricky. I should switch over to the side thing here for a second to have this conversation. You would think it would be easy to get the number of rows in an object. And I always say object because you can have things like filtered statistics, for example. You would think it would be easy to get the number of rows in an object. 
The thing is, with tables, you can have partitioning. Since SQL Server 2005, every object is considered to be partitioned. It's just that in standard edition, or for unpartitioned objects, it just happens to have only one partition in it. So you have to group together the number of partitions and get the total all together of rows all throughout the object. Wilfred says, yes, use sysindexes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look and see if the stats counter happens to have the number of uh, rows in the stat, because that would make it way easier instead of joining out to lots of other tables or system DMVs. Because my concern, whenever I ship something inside my code, is that people have, howdy Sim Sam, welcome to the club, people have tens of thousands of objects and I, I don't want to deal with doing lots of joins across tens of thousands of objects. Because sooner or later, somebody's going to run this script right after they do an update stats across the entire database, and it's going to produce an epic poop load of rows. So let's go see. Welcome to the club, Betty2. Betato? Betato. All right. So let's go pop back over here. <laughs> The first thing I'm going to check to see is if in that sysdm stats properties or in sysstats it happens to have the row counter. So let's go add in just a comma. Let's go get uh, sp star Lee Brownhill caught a live show. I'm dancing, dancing, dancing. Um, ha ha! Woo! Oh, that's fantastic! Yes! Oh! So I can get. Yeah, exactly, with the Unicode thing. So I can get the number of rows that were in there at the time, and I can get the number of rows sampled. That's even better. So people can see if their statistics are getting sampled and not doing the full scan. They'll know that in the alert, too. Oh, oh, I am a man among gods, whatever. Uh, so now let's say, so I now I know that I can get the number of rows and sampled. So let's throw them that. Um, Plus, uh, plus, you know, I'm going to reformat this just a little. I'm going to, I'm going to reformat this just a little because I want it to, to look a little better. So let's see. This makes it a little bit more obvious what we're doing was updated on. There we go. Plus, um, and had to do to cast. Oops, I need cast over there. Uh, <laughs> surly death, that's funny. Uh, you'll see this is uh, Isle of Man. It's the Isle of Man Triskelion, I think it's called. Isle of Man is this beautiful little island off the coast of uh, Isle of Man, not Isle of Man. I like how you say that, though, but it's Isle of Man off the coast of uh, England. Beautiful, just wonderful little place. One of my favorite places on Earth. Uh, SP, what did we say was the name of that rose? Uh, as and Veracare 50. I'm just using Enver Veracare 50 is all over the place. Um, uh, plus uh, rows. Let's forgot my little Unicode in there. Rows uh, with with do 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 plus uh, cast with. I love mon. I love mon. I see what you're doing there. That's uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, row sampled. So I want cast sp row sampled. Uh, do, 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 plus n row sampled. Uh, producing. Plus, welcome to the club, Nightmare Vav. That's kind of interesting. Cast uh, SP steps. Uh, 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 whoops, I got to put the cast in there. Jeez, I didn't have that up there either. What a moron. Envercare 50. As Envercare 50. Uh, and steps. All right, that should do it. So that, I think, gives us everything that we want out of our warning. Damn, y'all are all in all over. Zlothquay, welcome to the club. All right, so now let's see here. Oh, yes. Uh, steps, I should say steps in the histogram, just for folks who don't know what that means. Histogram. All right, so now we have, here's our little warning that's going to pop up. Um, I don't really like... Uh, uh, Guardian Nation, the problem is that you have no idea where the hell you are because you're asking questions about PC setup. 
inside a Microsoft SQL Server broadcast. That's a diagnosis problem is you have no idea where the hell you are. Uh, Yossi says, why do you use Care? This is why I don't get a whole lot of followers, because I'm a bit of a jerk. Uh, Yossi says, why do you use Envercare versus Vercare? Because you can have uh, uh, Unicode object names. So like uh, you can put Unicode stuff inside your table names. Sooner or later, you'll work with a shop like SAP or whatever that puts Envercare. <laughs> you should turn it off. That's good. Um, you can put Unicode stuff inside your table names. So, All right. So now, welcome to the club, Ramon. 1987, kid, kid, young whippersnapper. Um, Yossi says, doesn't that sacrifice performance though? So that is a much bigger discussion. Now, does the, do the table name sacrifice performance? No, uh, you can, you can use big one monster characters for table names. Does it sacrifice performance on my DMV script? I don't care if it sacrifices performance, the script has to work and it would break. If I had Unicode table names, my scripts can't break. It's okay. If they go slow, they're just not allowed to break. PC Ugly, welcome to the club. All right, <laughs> I love Northern Canucks thing too. That's pretty funny. Um, Jagadesh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I that's my fundamentals of query tuning class. It's not what I'm covering here, but it's my fundamentals query. Uh, uh, oh yes, Adrian, yes, very good. Uh, um, <laughs> Yes. Um, so uh, yes, first to have represent somebody, a friend of mine from uh, training classes sent me this t-shirt. I always encourage training class students and vendors and all. I'm like, I will wear whatever dumb shirts you send me. So, all right. So now we've got this, we've got the number of rows in it. One thing I do kind of want to do, I, I'm not a really big fan of the un, without commas inside here. Um, I, the problem is, is that I would really love to have a nicely formatted string of 299 comma, you're like decimal separators or hundreds and thousands and all that separators. The problem is, is you can have really large objects that blow past the money data type. Plus, this script is going to be running people all over the world who sometimes use commas, sometimes use periods. So I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to leave it this way, even though it's not very elegant. So I have the first thing done. I now have a script that I can go run that will show me only the list of statistics that were updated in the last 15 minutes. Now, the next thing I got to do is I get it, got to get it to be able to work across all of my databases. Right now, this only uh, works in the one database that I'm in. So I'm going to need to use the function or a, a SQL Server stored procedure called SPMS for each DB. SPMS for each DB will scroll through all the databases and run a script for you in every database that you have. The problem is that it takes a parameter in the form of a string of the query that it's going to execute. I'll show you an example of it. So I'm going to say, if I say right now, select a star from, or no, we'll do just do select DB name. So if I do select DB name, it only runs in the one database that I'm in. If I want to run that in every database that I have, that's where MS per MS for each DB comes in. SP MS for each DB. And then you pass in the uh, string that you want to run, like select DB name. And then it's going to run, not a parentheses on the end there. Now it's going to run in every single uh, uh, database. Um, well, except it's not going to cycle into that database unless you ask it to. You have to say use. And then when you say use, what SQL Server does is it replaces the question mark with the database that it's trying to run queries in. So now what I need to do is I need to pass that query up top that I've written into SPMS for each DB. But the problem, those of you who are pretty sharp, when I run this are going to recognize that when I try to do this with a bunch of single quotes, it's not going to work. So watch what happens. I'm going to say, and I'm actually going to copy this to a new window just so that I have my original piece over there. Let's say exec SP MS for each DB. And then here's my string. And then I'll also put the use at the beginning. Use. Boom. Now what's going to happen? If I try to run this, it's going to blow chunks because I got a bunch of single quotes inside here and I got to go fix all the single quotes. 
All the single quotes, all the single quotes. So I'll go through and replace all the single quotes with double quotes. So I will say edit and then find and replace. Do, 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 do. I never remember where this is at. On Azure Data Studio, I kind of remember the, uh, the places of it, but here not so much. Single quote, go replace with double quotes. <laughs> and Jedi Mind Gorilla, right? I share that so that y'all are just as screwed as I am. Uh, so now I did it, and I need to still fix the first one and the last one. There we go. So now I got this. Now I can go run it, and it rips through all of the databases. Ta-da! Now I need to, so now you can see that it's ripping through all of the databases, but I may not care on some, for example, system databases or system objects. For example, if there's a, a built-in system like sysobject values, who the hell cares? I don't care about system tables whose objects, whose stats updated. So I need to tweak one other thing about this. I need to exclude system objects. To do that, I'm going to look in the sysobjects DMV. I'm going to say select star from sysobjects. I'm going to do this over in the master database, which is where I, I'm pointing at the screen, which is where I had the problem in here. The master database is the one that's throwing false results. So let's switch over to the master database. And here, this is the stuff that I want to exclude. Anything that says is MS shipped, I'm going to completely exclude. So I'm going to also say in my where clause up here, and uh, object is ms shipped equals zero. So then that should welcome the gemster. So let's try that again, and let's see if it works. So now it doesn't produce anything in here other than the users table, which was updated recently. And now I have exactly what I need. So where are we so far? I should switch over. So where are we now? So now we spent the first hour building the query that will go check for all the tables that have stats updated in the last 15 minutes. This marks a good stopping point for me to go refuel my coffee. I am well. I'm Oh, Flying Cod, good to see you. Oh, it's very good to see you. So the now what I have is that script. Now I need to integrate it into SP Blitz first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a five minute bio break. It is like two minutes before the hour. Just to make it easy, I'm going to come back at five minutes after the hour. So I'm going to come back at five minutes after the hour. I'll keep the stream up and all that. I'm just going to switch to a pause screen. I'll come back at five minutes up after the hour. I'm going to open up GitHub disk desktop. I'm going to create an issue for this thing that I'm working on. I'm going to go um, add the script into add the warning into SP Blitz first, and I'm going to update my blog post that will have all the monthly changes for SP Blitz first in it. So, in terms of what you're going to learn in the next hour, is about GitHub sort the way I source control the first responder kit, the way I announce blog posts for the new releases, and then we're also going to try and test it. May even test it on SQL Server 2008. We'll see what happens. So we'll regroup at five minutes after the hour. I will see you all back in here then. See you shortly.
Okay, let's see what we got here. Welcome back, folks. It's five minutes after the hour. I have refilled my tasty beverage. And now, so as a, re a reminder, what we did in the first half or the first hour, I guess first third, I'm on here. So it's 6 a.m. Um, San Diego time. My favorite coffee shop downstairs, well, I guess it's the only coffee shop downstairs. Uh, my favorite coffee shop downstairs opens at 8 a.m. So it opens in two hours Pacific time. You've got me until they open. <laughs> Once they open, I'm out of here. So that gives me a nice expiration time. They have this wonderful uh, uh, smoked salmon on a bagel kind of thing, like a lox and bagel that I just love starting my days with. So uh, in the next hour, what I'm going to be doing is adding this check into the first responder kit. And then in the third hour, I'll just take open Q&A and we'll do whatever demos that y'all uh, ask about. And we'll switch into just plain straight T-SQL Q&A. But in this hour, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up GitHub. I'm going to make an issue for this improvement that I'm about to add to the uh, SP Blitz first. I'm going to merge it into the code, which is going to involve its own little tricky bits. You'll learn about how the internals of SP Blitz first works. Uh, and then I'll update the blog post with the changes uh, that I'm going to make. Lox, yes. Oh, it's so delicious. Mm. All right, let's get started. Oh, one of you said, uh, abuse sysadmin said, didn't uh, didn't he used to live in Vegas? And I think you mean me. And I, uh, there are companies mailing addresses in Vegas. It's just because we have a mail processing facility in Vegas. It's not ours. It's not just ours, but... We use a, a mail processing thing, whole earth class mail, earth class mail that opens all our email, deposits checks for us and stuff like that. So that way my wife and I can be all over the world and uh, be on vacation for months and we just take your money and that's the end of it. Woohoo! We love money. Um, and Jenna, my gorilla, you said during the break, uh, you were going to replace a bilge pump in your boat, but this is far more fun. What kind of boat do you have? I'm because uh, you know, of course, they say that the best thing is isn't to own a boat; it's to have a friend with a boat. So you're my friend, buddy. Uh, I love boats so much. I absolutely love them. I will never own a boat uh, as long as I live. My my goal, just to give you a vision into what my childhood was like. Um, oh yeah, wow. Oh, that's so, oh, it's so awesome. Oh, you're lucky. That's just great. I'm happy for you. That's awesome. Grady Whites are amazing. Just nice. Um, but I took my girl, goal growing up was my <laughs> bilge pump surface sissies. Um, oh, that's right. I for, yeah, I totally forgot that you're down by uh, Houston, down by Baytown. Um, the, uh, my goal growing up was always to have a 28 foot boat by the time I was 28 and a, specifically a sailboat, wanted a 28 foot sailboat by the time I was 28 and a 45 foot sailboat by the time I was 45. And I did a couple of sailboat races, and I'm like, you know what? I don't ever need to do that again. I don't ever, ever, ever need to do that again. That's not enjoyable. Plus, I was caught in a couple of storms, and I was like, you know, being out in a storm with a big metal pole, you know, being hanging on to a boat with a big giant metal pole, that's not really a, a great... Uh, I, you're exactly right, Jedi Mangrel. You're exactly right. Sailboating is working. Sailboating is working. It looks so peaceful. Boy, as, as soon as anything goes wrong, oh. All right. So what we have here is we have the diagnostics. You're going to need a bigger boat. Exactly. I am, I am exactly like the cat with the paper news. I should buy a boat. Oh, hurricanes. Jeez. Oh, uh, Corey, I'm watching with my three-month-old daughter. I don't think she's paying attention. You know, just here, this may perk her up. Hey, buddy. Ooh, hey, looks like you're trying to query the user's table. <laughs> Clippy would probably be a great uh, babysitter. Hey, looks like you're trying to play with matches. You know what? You need some gasoline. I got gasoline over right here. That's Clippy. Uh, so I got my query here now, and I can run it through, uh, run it through, and get, get all the data that I need. But now I need to merge it into SP Blitz first. So whenever you want to do work on an open source project, the way that that starts is by going to the open source projects repo. So this is GitHub. I'm going to go just copy in the URL. I'll just copy it in there so that people have it in firstresponderkit.org, uh, so that people have it over in Slack. And when I go there, I can go click on, welcome to the club, Brandon. I can go click on issues, and I'm going to go add an issue for this. 
So this is a feature request. I have I break these out into bug reports and feature requests to kind of gently hint to people that if you want a feature, you need to do the code yourself. You know, the open source doesn't mean free consulting and development. So you'll see when I click on new feature request, there's some wording in here to kind of strongly encourage people of make sure you've thought through this and that you're ready to do the code. SP Blitz first. Add a check for statistics updated recently. Is your feature request related to a problem? Yes. When statistics update, it causes plans to free from the cache. Good to see you, Hanny, too, as well. And welcome to the club. <laughs> uh, free plans from the cache. Uh, SP Blitz first. Uh, can be run and logged to a table every 15 minutes. So it'd be helpful to see which stats were recently, Chucky J, easier name to pronounce right there, uh, to helpful were recently updated. Solution that I'd like, a warning of stats were recently updated and list the stats in the details. Alternatives you've considered, um, building a separate script to check when stats were updated. Uh, are you ready to build code for the feature? Uh, yes, I am ready and willing. Well, my mind is willing. My body is at 6, 12 a.m. local. Goodness, oh, local time. Uh, the assignees, I'm going to assign myself. Uh, when you own the repo, you get to make the assignees and the labels and stuff like that. Those of you who, thank you, Jedi Mind Gorilla. Uh, those of you who add your own tickets, you want to get zoom tight. I won't be able to do that. So we'll add it to the milestone. Thank y'all. Oh, that's, thank goodness for y'all. It's always funny. I say funny, but you know, since I do have asthma, I cough from time to time. And it's really like I will try anything to avoid coffee, coughing in elevators. Any kind of close-in ones. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to type it. Man, because I feel so guilty these days. You know, people, wow. I don't want them to freak out. You know, they immediately just go, oh. <sighs> All right, so we've got the check. Now I need to go add over in, S in uh, GitHub dis Desktop. So I have the issue number over there in the, on the left. Now I need to add a branch. For, so for those of you who haven't seen before, and I'll minimize it because my the way that my Windows is set up and the graphics are just a little bit weird in terms of being odd. So here, this is GitHub Desktop, and this is where you manage things like branches and change control types of pull requests. So, well, really just branches. So I'm going to say, go give me a new branch. And I try to use the menus instead of keyboard shortcuts when I'm showing you something that you may not have seen before. Usually I just hit Control B. Um, so the branch that I'm going to go create is going to have our issue number in it. Uh, so our issue number was 2386. SP Blitz first new or stats update check create a new branch. So now I have a branch locally, which is the changes, which are the changes that I'm working on. And Scott, you're absolutely right. There are a lot of uh, people are now more expecting DBAs to know stuff like GitHub. Um, it's way less than developers. Like developers, it's a mandatory thing, but here, DBAs, it's still fairly recent. So I've, I've got this, this new branch. I have the code for SP Blitz first. The place where I have it is probably going to seem kind of awkward. It's in C temp, but that's just because I, this is a Windows VM. I usually do my work on my Mac locally, so, but I just install this for y'all so that I can walk you through on demos. So here I've got SP Blitz first, so I can go open. Welcome to the club, Chandu. So I can go welcome, or I can go uh, add open SP Blitz first in uh, SSMS. So here's the code for it. Now I can go do my editing inside here. Now let me give you a, a few words about how my scripts usually work. So things like SP Blitz first. The way that they work is they create a temp table. Then they do a whole bunch of checks. And for every check, like, was the server rebooted recently? If they return rows, they insert the rows into the temp table. 
So at the beginning, we create a temp table. We do a whole bunch of checks individually, and all the checks are standalone, just pushing rows into this temp table. And at the very end, then we go take the rows out of uh, the temp table and return them to the end users. So there's going to be a table called something like Blitz First Results that we're going to be dumping our data into. Uh, Chandu, you're absolutely right. Uh, Khaled says, what pulls you out of the Mac out to the Windows? Because I want to meet people where they are. I want to show people the tools that they would usually use. Most of you just don't run Macs. There are very few of us out there who are SQL Server DBAs or, or developers who run Macs. I say SQL Server developers. There are lots of developers using Macs, just not SQL Server people. Hey, and welcome to the club in Madrid. Um, the, the reason why I use a Mac is just because I switched during the Windows Vista days. Back during the dark days of Windows Vista, and the upgrades were coming out and all that, I was a sysadmin in DBA, and I, I saw Windows Vista, and I'm like, mm, not today, Satan, and was like, uh, switch. I'd always wanted a Mac before then, and I switched over. I wouldn't recommend that anyone switch today. Windows 10 is fine. Windows 10 does everything that you're going to need to do. It's just that now switching back is really hard. I bought several um, Windows laptops, and I just haven't been able to make the switch back. There are so many apps that I like, like on the streaming side. I have my streaming and everything, video production, all set up just the way that I want it on the Mac. It would be a, a work for me to switch over to Windows, and there's not an ROI for it at this point, especially with Microsoft being so open source and uh, Mac friendly these days. So I'm going to scroll down here and show you the uh, temp table that it goes and creates. So here's the, yeah, Chucky, I'm using Azure Data Studio. So here's the temp table that we're going to be going and populating. We're going to take the results of the query that we did in the first hour, and we're going to insert a row into here and dump in, here's everything whose stats changed. Now I have a decision to make. <laughs> WP, it's only because you don't know me well enough yet. Um, the, I have a decision to make. Should I put one row into this, temp t or into this table for every stat that was updated, or do I just put one row in and then have some kind of XML piece, some big long list of all the stats inside there? Well, it turns out that I thought through this ahead of time when I was building SP Blitz first, and I have a details Enver Care Max column that will take lots of data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert one row into here with an Enver Care Max with the full list of stats that were updated. So let's go down and I'm going to insert or find out where I'm going to do this insert into the temp table. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm, oh, so I should stop for a second too. So you see this check ID column. Every check that I do in SP Blitz first, like, do you have high CPU? Was the server recently rebooted? Is there blocking happening? Is a backup running? Every one of these is considered a check. And there is, talk about an unrelated question. I'm not going to hit that now, but I'll do questions in the next hour, after the top of the next hour, when I, after the next break, when I finish this SP Blitz first section. I'll take totally unrelated questions, anything y'all want to talk about. So these check IDs, we have a list of them. We have a list of all the check IDs. It happens to be in the GitHub repo under documentation. Under documentation here, we have ta-da, SP Blitz first checks by priority. And it's a markdown file. I'm going to open it with Notepad only because it's a little easier to edit with Notepad than it is a traditional markdown editor. So here it says up at the top, the current high check ID is number 43. Instead, I'm going to say now I'm going to amp that up to 44. And I'm going to go find what priority do I want to call this. These are listed by priority. Generally speaking, when I'm doing checks and stuff like SP Blitz and SP Blitz first, I want to give you a prioritized checklist of why I think the SQL Server is slow right now. So how bad in the grand scheme of things are stats updates? What stats updates do is that they free the plan cache for specific objects, whatever objects that had that stat in them or had that index or table in them. So I'm going to look at that. Is it as bad as, oh, you know what? Right here, there's plan cache erased recently. 
and recompilations a second are high and compilations are second are high. All of these have to do with stats being updated. I think I found my place. It's going to be, I found my place in the world. It's actually the Isle of Man. Okay, so we're going to put it right in here. Uh, 50, or let's go copy paste the other one. 50, and this is query problems, statistics updated recently. And then I'm going to need a link. So, and I'll have to code this link. I'm going to say slash go slash stats. I don't know if that's taken. I'm going to copy paste that out into my browser. This is why it's a lot of work writing open source stuff is I actually have to document my work. Beautiful. Perfect. That's actually great. I want a short code that I haven't used yet before. So that's going to be the one that we go use. Then my check ID is number 44. That's the one that I just added. So we're going to be adding this as check ID number 44. That's actually not written correctly. There should be a space in between here. That should also be alphabetized too. That should be put up here. So let's go move that around and save it. So now we've just saved our little documentation piece. We know that our check ID is 44. So let's go find where in the script we're going to add this check. Ninesh, go welcome to the club. So this SP Blitz first has you know thousands of lines in it. Let's go look and uh, I'm going to shrink the text down to 100% here just for a second, only to show you the size of this thing. So if I go all the way down to the bottom, we're talking like in all about 4,000 lines worth of code. Where do I put this? Well, the way that SP Blitz first works. This is, I'm going to leave it on this camera, even though it's kind of a side note here for a second. The way that SP Blitz first is it takes a snapshot of a whole bunch of DMVs, writes a whole bunch of DMVs to disk, like wait stats, waits for five seconds, takes another snapshot, and then compares what happened during that five second time span. So the place where I run a lot of analysis checks is while I'm doing a wait for, for up to the length of time that they ran it. I bet if I search for wait for inside here, so let's go hit wait for. If I search for wait for inside here, I'm going to find the place where we're doing the wait for, and then I'll zoom out. Da -da -da -da. That's exactly where it is. Do -do 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 -do. Oops, shit, I've lost it. Oh, there goes my so much for my not safe for work today. I swear a lot. I swear, it's, it, people are always surprised when they meet me in real life. I have the worst potty mouth you could ever believe. All right, so in here, here it is, raise error in raise roar, finished running investigatory queries. Uh, if we haven't waited for this seconds long, go wait. This is exactly where I want to put it. So right in here is where I'm going to add my check for stats were recently updated. So remember this line 2053. So <laughs> you have this early dev. You're, I agree quite quite much there. So here's where I'm going to add the check. And in order to do it, I'm going to copy paste someone else's check. So I'm going to do I'm going to select an easy one just so that it's a little easier to understand. Do 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 do. Uh, that is beautiful right there. That's absolutely perfect. So copy. Uh, Nulligor says, is this an entire program in SQL? Yes, it's called a stored procedure. Stored procedures are kind of like uh, apps that are just built into SQL Server. So here's the query that, I'm, that I've copy pasted from that I'm going to go edit. So I'm going to say, here's the uh, query. Uh, take my follow. Thank you, Nulligor. I appreciate it. Uh, query problems. And the problem for this is statistics updated recently. And the check ID was 44, I believe. So now the way that I usually write these checks is I just do a flat out insert. And the select here is whatever the problem was. Well, in here, it's going to be a little different because we have that big ginormous query that we wrote earlier. This is the part that I need to go dump into the temp table. So I'm going to copy this out and go put it in the other window. So copy out our hard one diagnostic query. I'm actually going to save that. So copy that out and I'm going to put it into here. This is where I need to kind of merge these two things together. Now, if this wasn't dynamic SQL, or if it wasn't um, 
if it wasn't something that I have to do in SPMS for each DB, I would simply say select check 44 as priority or 44 as check ID. We said 50 as priority. We said query problems and statistics updated recently. And then the URL was brentozar.com slash go slash stats. The problem is here, I've got this big piece of dynamic SQL that I need to integrate in there instead. So let's go do that. So instead of just doing this select out of here, thank you, uh, Hybrids. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the club. So instead, what I'm going to have to do is move this temp table insert over into the MS for each DB. But if I do this, it's going to produce one line per stat. Because remember my original query? This thing produces one line per individual stat that comes back. I actually want just one line. Now here's where the, the part where I'm at kind of at a crossroads. I only have about 35 minutes left before I wanted to switch into Q&A. So I might just go ahead and write this as is, putting one line in per stat. This is how we end up shipping features that we're not necessarily completely happy with. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do. That. I'm going to insert one line per stat, just because I'm going to show you the full life cycle of putting things into GitHub and all that. And then I can always come back better and make it later, make it better last time, next time. So let's go make this into dynamic SQL. So I'm going to say insert into SP Blitz first check results. Boom. So here's that piece right there. Uh, and then select quote name. I'm going to have to select the other stuff too that we want. So it is 44 as check ID. Let's copy paste the rest. Come back better. Make it later. Exactly. Yes. Which doesn't usually work out that way, but that's okay. Or I'll fix it in post-production is the other thing that uh, we like to say. I'll fix it in post. Uh, so there's my stats updated recently, my finding, my details are going to be that object name that changed. So I'm going to say details equals, and then I'm going to tab out all this stuff. Do, 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 do. Oh, my shift really isn't working on that side. That's really weird how that works. Uh, so this has all the stuff that I want inside there. Choo, 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 choo. Lost in Spain. <laughs> That's kind of amusing. That's good. Uh, so now I'm going through all those. What else do I have to add? I wanted details. I'm not going to have a details int. I'm going to move the URL around earlier just so that it's easier to read. So that I say cut and then paste. And then I'll double frame that in double quotes. There we go. So now I got my big old piece of dynamic SQL there uh, that's going to run. It's not dynamic SQL. It's running SPMS for HDB. Now I can get rid of that piece right there. And this is how you write a check into SP Blitz first. Let's tab it in just a little bit. Uh, comma, uh, as in comma, 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 chameleon. I, I know, I know, it's terrible. I should be ashamed of myself. Now, is this going to work? Oh, man. So one of the things that stuck, David said, you could use uh, uh, question mark but exclude the system databases. I could, but you're never going to believe this. You're never going to believe this. People actually put things inside of the system databases sometimes. Unbelievable. Oh, man. I know. I know. Jeez, it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> I like Chucky. Never say, never say comma again in chat. So um, somebody else said, could I use a CTE? Yeah, maybe. I'm just trying to get across the finish line as quickly as possible. Super Demon. Or, or I said Super Demon. I read it really fast, and that's what it looked like. Sniper Demo Demon. So I almost said Sniper Demo. So well, uh, welcome to the club. Thanks for the follow, or thanks for the uh, subscribe. I appreciate it. So now I've got this. I don't actually know that this is going to work, because i got double quotes. No, that should work. SBMS for HDB. I think it's going to work. All right, so let's put her into place. Now, one thing that's a little tricky is I changed this during debugging. I changed this over to 150 instead of 15. So I'm going to change this back to 15. 
SP Blitz First has one other thing that's kind of interesting. You can run this on a scheduled job like every 15 minutes. That's where I came up with the 15. I'm just going to look up at the top of M uh, SP uh, I'm going to look up at the top of here to see if it has anything about minutes back, like go uh, a certain number of minutes, and it does not. Okay, great. I think we've got a winner here. So let's go put this into production, and let's see what happens. Let's execute it. Now it, it at least compiled. We're off to a good start there. Now let's run it, SP Blitz first. And I'm going to run it with no parameters, just exactly as is. <laughs> Bring a scene. That's actually, that's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. Now, what do I have here? Ooh, at first it looks like I have a winner because it says I have stats updated recently. But then get a load of that. Oh, jeez. So I need to exclude TempDB. So I, I probably shouldn't touch TempDB because I, stats will be changing on TempDB all the time. So let's go change that because see how it shows that I had a bunch of things that were updated over there in TempDB. Chandu says, what is that in the details? It's what we call magic. That's the string that we built over in the first hour where it says, here's the statistic that was updated and how many rows that it had. So what I'm going to do instead here, I need to exclude tempdb. So 44, where is my, there it is. There's the check that we just added. So I'm also going to say where and dbid. OK, so, so how do you identify when you're in tempdb? So I'm going to do a separate sidebar conversation. How do you know when you're in tempdb? So the, when a man loves a woman, uh, how do you know when you're in TempDB? There are a lot of ways that you could do it. You could check the database name. You could also check the database ID. You could check for the, so the database ID is the same thing as a database number. I could also look at the, the question mark that was passed in. The question mark that was passed in from SPMS for each DB will give us the, <laughs> have you ever had a man? Uh, will give us, uh, I could compare that to the word TempDB. The reason why I pause here and say this is that Microsoft has kind of hinted in 2019, if you go through Sys messages, Sys messages is where they keep the messages that they're not necessarily ready to show you yet. Welcome to the club, uh, not phantoms. The messages that they're not ready to show you yet, you can go in there and see documentation about undocumented features. So inside there, there's stuff about contained system databases, like the ability to put master, model, MSDB, etc. in an availability group and fail them around. Well, if you do that, odds are they're probably going to end up with different database IDs. So ever since that they started hinting that they're going to do this, I've stopped relying on database ID in new code that, uh, that, uh, that I write. Instead, I'm going to use the name tempdb. So let's go find out when I switch over to here. <laughs> The way that I'm going to check to see if I'm in SP or in uh, tempdb is I'm instead of using dbid, I'm going to say and uh, da, 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 is is anything other than tempdb. There we go. All right, so that should get it so that the database name is anything other than tempdb. Let's give that a shot. Let's put that into play, and then let's run SP Blitz first again and see what we got there. Do do do! Oh, it's gone. Well, the trick is, of course, it's gone, but that doesn't mean that we've crossed the finish line because whenever I test something, I not only got to get a net, no no false positives, I also got to throw in some real alerts inside there. So let's update the stats. Let's go alter table DBO users rebuild so that we rebuild the objects inside of Stack Overflow 2010 users. And let's make sure that we get a warning on that. So we do, woohoo! So in here it says, and we'll go click on it to go click on it. Um, Dio Canera, maybe yes. Uh, and unfortunately, though, I can't rely on it if it's not already here. Welcome to the club, Nisar Gupta. Hey, that one's a tough one. Uh, sometimes you can tell all the good usernames were taken. 
So in here, now it shows here had this many rows produced this many steps in the histogram. Here it shows me what the details were. I like having line breaks inside here, so I'm actually going to go throw in line breaks. Hi, hi Shashank. But this is perfect. It's producing exactly what I want. This down to the millisecond is probably a bad idea. It's a little wordy inside here, but whatever. So let's go throw in line breaks inside here as well, inside our check. So for line breaks, um, I'm going to say plus, I want to say it's NCARE. 13 plus NCARE 10. I want to say those are the two that will give you a combined, will give you a carriage return and line feed. So let's go execute that and see if we get a line break after the statistic. Shit. Oh. I, I swear a lot. Uh, so now, so stats updated recently. Here it is. Yep, nice, very nice. We get a line break after statistic. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So let's go copy paste that into several other places. Oh, dearie me. Uh, so let's paste that in there. And then let's paste that in here. Uh, do, do, do. We'll go plus boom. And then there, this needs to be an N. Then we'll go into here. Uh, do, 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 do. That's perfect. That is exactly what I want. Execute. And let's try this again. SP Blitz first. Big money, no whammies. Chandu says, what is wrong with the mic? <laughs> I assume you mean the microphone that uh, lets my curse words get through. And that's, that's, uh, that's my life. Uh, so let's go see. Perfect. Ah, so now we have stati the table name statistics was updated on this date. Uh, I want one after the date too as well. Let's throw that in. Close that. And he said, surprise. Uh, let's see here. That's got the object. Then I wanted it after statistic. What didn't I say? Stat was updated. What did? What was it that it produced that was incorrect? Oh, after the number of. Uh, yeah, right there. Had this number of sampled. No, that's exactly what I. Where the heck am I missing one? SP Blitz first. Where was I missing a? Do do do. Here we go. Uh, had, was updated on. So after the date time, that's where I want it. After the date time was updated on, that's where I missed it right there. Perfect. Okay, good. Uh, and then I don't need these spaces in front. Uh, rows with had who to do to do this rows with this many rows sampled. Perfect. Producing this many steps in the histogram. Perfect. Hot diggity. So let's try it one more time and make sure that this is formatted as beautifully as I like it to be. And then click on it. Perfect. Ta-da. Has the object name, the stat, was updated on this date. Had this, oh, there's a comma at the, oh, that's not good. That's not acceptable. Uh, Shashank says, this is going bonkers for me at the moment. Uh, I don't even know what that means. Uh, so comma, chameleon. Your code compiles, your code compiles. I need that over at the other end here, and comma. So that adds that one. Row sampled, produce steps in the histogram. I think that that does it. Let's try now, and this might be the wiener. Uh, Chandu says, I think something is wrong with your mic. It sounds broken. What? I don't know what you're talking about there, Chandu. I don't know that anybody else uh, has that experience. Yeah, nothing wrong now. You may want to try not listening to your uh, listening to webcasts over on an AM radio. Um, so I uh, broke something inside there, and it was this piece right here. I forgot to put the plus sign over at the end. So that's not, if it's too loud, you're too old. Uh, so there we go. Do, 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 do. And he said the last comma should be before. Let's go take a look. All right. Oh, good, 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 good. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, right there. That's the one right there after the date. So it's the one on the date. Let's see here. The date is right there. Good catch. Okay. So let's move that over here. Cut and then paste. And then this is, you know, how all of my debugging goes. Run it 420 times and then eventually you'll have a really good... Uh, 
really good looking output. So let's get it. All right, good. So here's the table name. Statistic name was updated on this date and time. Had this many rows with this many rows sampled. Um, I might even put stat. I'm torn on whether to put that on the same line. Put the, the object and the statistics. And I leave it that way. Producing 24 steps in the history. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm also going to say in there inside the de Actually, I'm going to stop there. That's, that's pretty perfect in terms of details. I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to do uh, Stack Overflow 2010. I'm going to do the same thing for a couple of databases just so that we see what it looks like when multiple stats are updated. Uh, Richard says, final comma should be then and or and. Isn't it tough leaving comments for stuff like this on places like Twitch where you get limited amount of space and you're like, I'm trying to convey a really complex idea and I just don't have enough space. So we'll let, uh, we'll let this thing go rebuild and then we'll go look at the output again while it runs. You're saying that the final comma should be Final comma's there, that's in the right place. Then and or and. Uh, I, I, uh, Richard, I don't, I don't know and I don't agree with you, but uh, I mean, I, I might just not understand what you're saying. Let's go take a look. Oh, no, 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 it's not an ant. So like I'm saying, uh, Brent walked to the store uh, and purchased four hot dogs, comma, producing a meal for 400 people or whatever it is. Obviously, that sentence doesn't make sense with hot dogs. Um, but here, this statistic was updated on this date. It had this many rows in it with this many rows sampled, producing this many rows in the histogram. So it's, it's all, it's a description kind of thing. It's not and producing, that, that wouldn't make sense. Okay, all right, so, because the rows sampled produce this many steps in the histogram. Uh, okay, so, and I agree with you, it's like it's kind of convoluted regardless. There, there are all kinds of ways you could phrase it, but that's what pull requests are for. Okay, it's not or though, it's all, a, it's this, this happened doing this. Brent met Erica at the drive-in theater, comma, producing a child. Obviously that didn't happen. I don't have any. Uh, my close, my cap is the Isle of Man symbol. Uh, Isle of Man, it's the Triskelion. It is very close to Sicily's symbol. Has to do with the fact that uh, the one of the people from Isle of Man came from Sicily, if I remember right. <laughs> Ring the to said that took a turn. Cue the uh, sultry music. So I've got it now in SP Blitz first. It shows multiple rows inside here. The one thing that I do want to do inside the details is I want to tell them why that's a problem. So back over here, I'm going to say plus, and then and this in, uh, invalidated plans in the cache for this object and ca are causing recompile causing plan compiles and uh, introducing parameter snip and parameter sniffing period there we go all right so that kind of explains why i'm worried about it all right now just to execute it one more time to make sure that i didn't screw that up just that it still compiles and runs now i got to check my code into github I have to write the page for, write, get the link for slash go slash stats. So, ooh, oh, there's nope, it's not quite good enough here yet. We're really close, not quite. I want these alphabetized. I want these in some kind of order, and I want them to look, uh, to sort according to the details. So let's say in here, uh, order by details, order by details. Okay, so there we go. Period after histogram. There is a period after the histogram. It's right there. So save, execute, and then just to show you too, period after the histogram, it's right there. So that's good. Uh, close that guy, and then let's run and see if it did the order. It's hard to see stuff like that on, you know, monitors like yours, the 12-inch CRT that your grandfather handed down from the, oh, did I say that out loud? I probably did. Um, so it's still not ordered. So the reason why it's still not ordered is I'm ordering by going into the temp table, but I'm not ordering by on the final output of SP Blitz first. There's where my problem is. 
is. So let's go back and take out that order by inside here. I know I'm a terrible human being, right? Oh, I'm just awful. Oh, it's rough. So wherever the final uh, select is, I need to order that by details as well. So let's go way down to the near the end of the code and wherever we're doing the output. And I'm going to zoom way out. I'm going to make the font really tiny again, uh, just so that it works OK on mine, works, works fine on my machine. Um, it's not the row separated piece. It's not the op server piece. Uh, let's find where this thing is at. Uh, actually, let's do a Control F4 from Blitz first. Let's try that. It's not any of those. Uh, that's an update. This is not that. This I didn't find anything. It's not that. Select star from. Oh, OK, so it's not a direct from Blitz first. Damn it. Uh, I'm not walking out of here without uh, having the output where is it? Da, da, da. That's where I'm outputting to table. And that's not it. The output type is RSV, which is like uh, separated values. So it's not that. It's not that. It is, out, whoops, if output type equals top 10, it's not that. Oh, it is right. Th no, that's not it. If output type is CSV or RSV, it's not that. But and that one is actually sorted by details. Um, so let's see, such a small piece of code. Uh, yeah, there is a line feed variable. The problem is that it wouldn't have worked inside the dynamics, inside the SPMS for each DB, because the variable wasn't declared in there. But great eyes, though. I usually use that line feed variable. Um, let's see here. So if ex expert mode equals 0, that's it right there. If expert mode equals 0 and output type is anything other than null, none, it's right there. We forgot to put it by details there. Ah, woo -hoo! All right, so I'm going to look down and see if there are any others that are similar. Yep, there sure is right down below it. So let's dump in that too as well. Oops, it's this line right there. And then also, if expert mode equals 1, I want it sorted by details there as well. So we'll say our details. Perfect. Fantastic. Let's put that into production. And then let's get the font size so you all can see it again. And we'll run it one more time. Didn't know you were going to get free karaoke this morning, right? One more time. Oh, for those of you who are in the evening, it probably makes sense. D come on now. Come on now. Come on now. So I still didn't find wherever it's at. So let's go. God bless. Come on now. Uh, so I'm going to ship it. I'm going to, no, I'm not going to ship it. I would be ashamed if I shipped it like that. It's just terrible. Um, so I'm going to go to 100% font size. And I know it's down inside here somewhere. Expert mode equals zero. That's what I'm doing. Expert mode is zero. Output type is anything other than none. I'm ordering by case this, then findings, then details. Uh, that's where I'm at. Oh, I wonder if it won't output by, I wonder if it won't sort by Enverc. Oh, um, okay. Um, so I bet that that Enverc here isn't going to sort the way that I want it to. No, even that. It's probably not going to sort the way that I want it to. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call that one done just to say I'm not I'm not happy with it. Um, yeah, exactly. Go to the beach. Yes. Oh, you know what? One thing that I didn't say is ah uh, no, I'm gonna roll with it. Okay. So it works good enough for government work. Uh, Jedi Mind Gorilla says, "Look at the output. You're not my real dad." Um, he says the stack overflow is different dates. Well, it's not that it's different dates. They're different database names, 2010, 2013, 20. I want them to be sorted by database name, then uh, object name, and all that. Um, so that the first term, so this should be alphabetically as we're going through here, because everything else is exactly the same. Now we're on the net last column to be sorted by. And unfortunately, that's, yeah, Jedi says I thought they were. Gotcha. 
Okay, so we got this at least to the point where it compiles, it produces outputs, not as elegant as I would prefer, but it you know works close enough. It's how open source software gets built. So now let's go back over to GitHub. One of the things that I love about GitHub Desktop is it shows you this nice elegant diff showing you what changed. So in my file for uh, the documentation that has the checks by priority, here is a color-coded, Wilfred says check line 3991. Wilfred, I like you. Uh, if Wilfred, uh, I did fix it though. There it is right there. Um, so I, I, love that you, I love that you were going there though, but unfortunately I did fix that one. Uh, so now let's go back over to put XXX in front of the possible outputs. Yeah, I'm just not going to go deeper into troubleshooting that one because I only have 10 minutes left before I want to do the next bio break and then switch into open Q&A. There's only so far I want to go down the rat hole. So now in SP Blitz first, uh, so SP Blitz first now, here's the, got the color coded list of things that I changed. So here's the new check that I added. If I scroll down further, I also get here the things that I did with, ooh, what did we do there? Uh, 3991. Oh, so when you say 3991, you weren't talking about, uh, oh, so you weren't talking about, okay, gotcha. I thought you were talking about investigating the sort. Good catch, y'all. Oh, yeah. This is why I need y'all along every single time. I This is really why I live stream my code so that y'all can fix it before I go live out into the public. Um, so let's save it and then let's put that little fella out into production. Let's do one last shot on the run just to make sure that it compiles. Because obviously if I injected an extra E there, then God only knows uh, what would have happened. Woohoo! Yes! Sweet! Now we know why it wasn't working. So down at 3887, so what happened was when I went to go put this thing into production, I hit E instead of Control E. I didn't actually execute the script. We had the correct place for the line number sorting, but unfortunately you can't sort by Envercare Max. Okay, what if I cast that Envercare Max as something else? Now this tells you that anywhere that I had the sort in for details, I'm going to have to fix this. Let's try it. What happens if I go cast Envercare details as, oh, let's make it bigger so y'all can see it again. So let's say cast our details as Envercare 4000. So now, if I cast it as that, will I be able to do a sort with that? And I get incorrect syntax because I forgot an extra thing there. Rewinded YouTube. Oh, very smart, Wilfred. I like that. So now, let's see if it'll sort after I've casted it as Envercare 4000. And it's looking maybe good. No. Okay. So much for that. XML data type, except when using the is null. It's not XML. Oh, it might not be the place where I hit it. Okay. So I had done the cast, but I might need to do that in other places as well. This is where GitHub desktop comes in really handy. It shows you all the places that you change things. So now I need to go here and here just to make sure that I'm, if I cast them here and here, that it'll actually sort. So 3930, let's go up to line 3930 and we'll do right there, cast as Envercare 4000. And then where's the other place that it lives? Um, 3908. So 3908. Yeah, control G. It's just that I end up I end up not using that uh, as a Mac user because sometimes the control stuff doesn't always pass through correctly to a Windows VM. I know it's kind of cheesy. As Envercare 4000. Welcome to the club, Cuzzy. So we've got that in. Let's do a save on there, execute, and we'll see if SP Blitz first will sort now. Man, come on. Yes, sweet. We are in business. So let's save that. Make sure that's saved. That appears to work. We'll go back to GitHub. So now we've got all the changes. This is why I love looking at this GitHub desktop and making sure that there isn't something spectacular, not the DBA you're looking for. 
Uh, Ralph, you're looking at it. So your uh, mouth, Mafe, you're looking at it right here on the screen. This is how I'm doing version control. Maybe if you paid attention, you might learn something. Then again, maybe not. Uh, okay, so we'll go 2386 SP Blitz first, new check for stats, check for recently updated statistics. TG Yak, you may want to watch the replay and you'll see on that one. Uh, closes. Uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna, instead of say closes, I'm going to say working on number 2386, because I'm going to actually come back here and work on casting it as XML in order to, <laughs> uh, in order to uh, get it to work. So let's commit, publish that branch. We'll do a pull request. So we will do a pull request with create there, create pull request. And then say, assign myself, and I will do, uh, to do, 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 this is SP Blitz, uh, not SP Blitz cache, it's SP Blitz first, and it is an enhancement. Um, and then this is on the milestone for this month's, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Surly, you're correct. Uh, so there's that, create pull request, it'll go into the dev branch. Checking for the ability to merge automatically, merge it and confirm. And then we are off to the races. So now that issue, I now, I'm going to leave the issue open. Um, so because there are a couple other things that I need to do. So the code is, the code is written, but a fr now Khaled, Khaled has a point. Um, thanks, Till. I appreciate it. That's very sweet of you. Um, Khaled, your friend has a point that if, the, if you do a cast and an order by, the query probably needs uh, tuning. You're absolutely right. This is one of those things where you feel guilty about as an open source maintainer. I wish everything that I did was perfect. You know, like I wish all my queries were perfectly tuned and all. Silverlight, you're not giving up on the Silverlight, huh? Ooh. Well, all the things to hang your hat on. I don't, I don't know the Silverlight is such a good call there. Uh, so I wish that everything that I did was absolutely perfect, but the reality is I've spent the last two hours scripting together with y'all. This script will be something that's free and given back to the community. Now, there's just only so many hours that I'll put into open source work. I hope that y'all enjoy it. I hope it makes your life easier. But am I going to feel guilty about it not being perfect? Not even close. I used to. That used to hold me back from doing open source work. I was worried that not everyone would like what, my, what I produced. I'd be like, oh, they're going to make fun of the stuff that I do. They're going to laugh at my T-SQL. You know what I learned? No one ever reads my T-SQL, and God knows they don't read the documentation or the directions. Holy moly. Um, so I'm going to say the code is written, but I still have a few things to do. I need to write a documentation page at hbsbrentozar.com, go stats. Uh, I need to update the monthly release post with information about it. Um, I, uh, optional. I love that quote, Richard. That's one of my favorite quotes ever. It's so good. Uh, optional. Um, tweak the script so that it only produces one line in SP. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool, YG Dub. Uh, SP Blitz firsts output results for all stats with each stat listed on a line in uh, the details. So there we go. I'm going to put the comment in there. I'm not going to consider that one done yet, but in terms of time, I'm like happy with where we're at. Okay, so now we're going to take our next bio break. So we're going to take a bio break. I'm going to come back at five minutes after the hour again, and I will do completely open Q&A. Anything that y'all want to ask about around SQL Server, knock yourselves out. So at five minutes after, we're going to come back and do open questions. In the meantime, I'm going to go uh, fuel. I don't know that I'm going to do another espresso or not. I might do a decaf espresso just because my coffee shop downstairs has pretty good pour overs. So... I don't want to be flying through the roof when I uh, end up going down there and getting my locks and bagel. Uh, thank you for uh, the follow there, uh, uh, Disco. That's kind of cool. Disco, one, two, three, four, five. Now, I did say the SQL Server part, but you're open to ask me questions about anything. It's just that you're going to get really bad answers about everything else. So I will see you all back here at five minutes after the hour. I will be right back.
Okay, so let's see here. Uh, a couple of questions came in over the break. So now we'll just do totally open q and I'm going to close a little bit of the blinds behind me just to make it easier on the camera. I'm actually replacing that camera. There's a brand new one coming. Uh, my wife happened to see one of my streams and she saw the, the that I have a, like a USB webcam over there. Um, webcam over there and it uh, kind of struggles with picking up the right lights so i'm getting a brand new sony uh, for over there which will be kind of nice um, the wilfred asked during the break on what floor is your apartment i get that you want to take a gun and shoot me because of all the things that i say about sql server but uh i don't give out that kind of stuff just because i've actually had stalkers i've had people come and like track me down during conferences and track down the hotels that i'm staying at um, but it's up in the 20s and 30s uh, uh christian says cool playlist which one is it i use pretzel app so pretzel.rocks has pod safe music where it just costs six bucks a month and you can put it in as part of podcasts and streams and all that. Whereas, you know, I, other people make other uh, recommendations for music and whatnot, but it's so tricky in terms of, uh, in terms of rights and, you know, who's allowed to, to produce what on different broadcasts. And if you put a uh, copyrighted piece of music in on your stream, places like YouTube will actually yank your stream down with no notice. Khaled says, I use triggers heavily until I heard Pinal say, and I love Pinal, he's fantastic, brilliant, we have a great time together. He said, don't use triggers. He recommended them replacing them with a scheduled task every five minutes or so to do the same work. Do you hate triggers as well? I love triggers for reinforcing business logic in an emergency. If someone ships code, if they ship code, and don't worry if your chat message disappears, I've got them all here on my handy dandy list, right? You can actually see it right here as they go by. So I'll come to, I'll go through them in time. Um, I love triggers when someone ships code and we go, oh my God, we've got to add some business logic and we don't have a whole lot of time. You can inject it in and triggers. It's just like technical debt though. When you implement that, you're basically guaranteeing that you can't scale past a certain level. Now the level is pretty high. So folks like us who are performance tuned in with uh, all your, who do a whole lot of performance tuning type work, trying to help people get to really crazy scales, triggers end up causing backfires for stuff. So I end up not recommending those. I, I'm okay with putting them in. I love them for certain things like auditing changes, but it's just technical debt that you know you want to go back and revisit at some point in time. Um, so somebody said, uh, uh, I want to say it was Surly Dev said, hey, you should change the, the uh, chat that you do. Let me tweak one thing about it, because right now, the way that I've got it embedded in the stream, it disappears after 15 seconds. I'm just going to change that so that it doesn't hide after 15 seconds. Um, and then I will go through and change the chat so that it goes and refreshes. Just a second here. Let me go find where the heck this thing is. There it is. And then refresh cache. Okay. Uh, so, and several questions came in all in a uh, stream there in a second. So I'm going to go, now they should just stick around after they go through. A um, couple other questions. Advice on learn. Shashank asks, uh, advice on learning SQL Teradata. I don't do Teradata, so you totally got me there. Um, Adrian on YouTube says, any tips for regular troubleshooting of SQL Server CPU peaks? I have a server with 20 databases. I can't seem to catch the culprit as to which is pushing CPU. SQL Server doesn't track usage directly by database because you can have cross database queries. You can run a query in tempdb that accesses objects in several other databases. So what you want to use instead is spblitz cache. SP Blitz Cache will let you go sort the top 10 offenders by CPU, for example. That's SP Blitz Cache. Um, Richard says, do you, on YouTube, Richard says, do you use query store make it much? I use it, but it's got a slightly not completely baked feeling about it. Um, Tracy Baggiano has raised an Azure item on it, for example. So I just love hate feeling with query store. When it came out, I loved the idea that it exists. In practice, I've had it bring down client servers repeatedly. So the problem with query store is that if you have a lot of ad hoc queries, a lot of unparameterized queries, specifically if you have tens of thousands of unparameterized queries per hour, it can drive query store to like 100% CPU. It can even cause problems on cluster failovers. So it's one of those things that I want to believe 
I just haven't found a use case where I'm ready to recommend it to the public yet. I used to evangelize it. I used to have it as part of SP Blitz's checks and SP Blitz first. I would warn people if they didn't have Query Store installed. Um, I used to warn people in SQL Constant Care. But just after it brings down people's servers, I have a tough time uh, recommending that. It's really ch uh, challenging. Uh, Jedi Mind Grill says, are you a fan of linked servers or is it really that big of a security risk? If you, if you search for, I'm going to pop over and switch desktops. <laughs> if you search for Connor Cunningham distributed SQL bits, so SQL Query Store, or uh, SQL Query Store, so SQL Bits is a conference out in the UK that records all their sessions, puts them online. Connor Cunningham is one of the architects of the, uh, of the Query Optimizer, used to be an architect of the Query Optimizer. These days, I think he's moved on to something else in Azure, but um, still a brilliant man. And he lays out the problems with distributed queries, why they don't perform very well, all that good stuff. So search for Connor Cunningham distributed SQL bits, and you can watch the whole session online. Uh, coming back over to here. <laughs> Uh, abuse system, yep, so uh, do, 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 do. early dev says featured chat works great if someone is queuing up questions for you. Yeah, I just, you viewers are so lazy and you know, I can't get you to volunteer for things. That's not true. I've just never tried. Um, Santi asks, will there be a difference if there was a sample stats update done? Be more specific with your question about what will there be a difference be? Um, Abraham says, hi, Brent. Good morning. What do you think about in-memory OLTP? I think it's hot garbage. Um, uh, CheckDB doesn't work for in-memory OLTP. That's my starting point. In-memory OLTP has all problem, all kinds of problems with database startup. I have never seen a problem where in-memory OLTP was the right answer. I have no doubt that out there someone has found a situation when, where in-memory OLTP is the right answer. But every single time that a client has come to me and said, hey, uh, I'm looking for in-memory OLTP help, we've looked at the system and in-memory OLTP has been entirely the wrong answer. Uh, da, 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 da. Nimot says, can we use the missing index report to apply for database? Does it help uh, speed up the process? Yes, I teach about that in my class, Fundamentals of Index Tuning and Mastering Query Tuning. I teach you how to run those. Shurish Kumar says, hi Brent, could you post a, se a session about SQL Big Data Cluster? I don't and I never will. Not that they're bad, it's just that you got to pick the things that you're good at. Big Data Clusters combines a bunch of things that almost no one is good at. Linux, Kubernetes, a new feature in SQL Server 2019, querying out to Oracle, Teradata, all these other things. I just don't know anybody who's good at it. Now, the one person I know who's good at it, damn it, why can't I remember uh, his name? Oh, we're friends on Instagram. It drives me crazy. Um, but if you search for SQL Server Big Data Cluster blog, there's one blogger out there who's doing it and posting videos about it, even on YouTube. But I never will. Just will never happen. Because you got to pick your winners, right? You got like I got to pick the things that I'm going to be good at and I'm going to teach all about. I'm not going to get good at running SQL Server on Linux in Kubernetes containers. It's just not going to happen. Um, David on YouTube asks, "Is there a way to calculate the optimal percentage to update stats?" Yep, 100%. Moving on. Now, of course, uh, Brent, you're joking. Updating stats with 100% full scan is hard. It takes a long time. So anything less than 100% is a compromise. It's going to run faster, but you're going to get crappy stats. And it just comes down to how crappy of stats your application is able to tolerate and how weird your data is. Uh, Matt says, is there a significant overhead in splitting monolithic stored proc logic out until smaller procs for maintainability? And, and when you say overhead, it all, it's all going to depend on the code and how much time you have to do it. So it depends. I've seen great written large stored procedures. I've seen terrible written stored procedures. It's like asking how long is a piece of string. Uh, G. Donfrio says, best tutorial on installing and configuring SQL Server 2017 clusters on premise. So the problem is with clusters is that clustering and availability groups changed so much every year for the past like five years. There was a clustering expert out there, Alan Hurt. The guy runs SQLHA.com. So if you search for SQLHA.com, back in like 2011, Alan said, I'm going to bring out a book on you know clusters and availability groups, and he took money for it, and it's even still for sale, and he's never actually shipped it. And I don't blame him because the technology changes so fast. 
2012, 2014, 16, 17, 19, every one of these years, Microsoft has changed the way that clusters are really built and explained and Linux and Windows and Kubernetes and all this kind of stuff. So the technology is changing faster than the documentation can keep up. So what you want to do is just go hit the built-in product documentation. You're not going to find third-party people who do a great job of building training material on it. Because it changes so fast, there's not an ROI in me sitting around and building training on it. Because the length of time it'll take me to build the training, the product will have already changed, and my revenue will just won't make sense. So just go read the documentation instead. Microsoft is the only company who can afford to lose money building documentation. Uh, next up, VTOL Freak. Okay, yep, yeah. So let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, ta -da -ta. Richard says, query store, were the issues down to capture mode? No, even on auto, I've seen it bring down servers. Uh, Jedi mind, da, 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 da. Jedi mind Gorilla says trying to P to V our clusters. I would never P to V a cluster. I would build new clusters over in VMware Hyper-V instead. Because um, so many of your cluster drivers, stuff like uh, IO drivers, network drivers, all that are going to be so different between VMs and physical. That, and I really want to be able to test failovers back and forth before I go live. That's why I'd want to build the brand new clusters over it excuse me, in VMware or Hyper-V, and then load test the bejesus out of them failing over back and forth. Adrian on YouTube asks, does it make sense to run index maintenance daily on a data warehouse? Da oh, what the what? Oh, Carlos, hello, welcome to the club. Thank you, I appreciate the subscription, that's very cool. Uh, Adrian says, the Adrian's, I had to take a deep breath and like reread Adrian's questions. Adrian says, does it make sense to run index maintenance daily on a data warehouse that is rebuilt from scratch nightly? Whoever thought that a data warehouse being rebuilt nightly was a good idea? Dude, your problem isn't index maintenance. Your problem is whoever built that data warehouse. That is is insane. Reloading it from scratch every night, that's called a, 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 a groundhog day data warehouse. Uh, so do, that's your bigger problem, not index maintenance. Chandu says, is this Q&A? No, it's just a bunch of A's. Uh, next up we have uh, Suresh says, oh, Suresh says, to join your mastering performance tuning class, do I need to have good T-SQL skills or will just the basics of it be fine? What you do is take the fundamentals classes first. So take fundamentals of index tuning, fundamentals of query tuning, fundamentals of parameter sniffing. Then you can move on to the mastering classes. Uh, let's see here. Next up, uh, to do to David's up on YouTube, follow up on the stats as the trouble is that the table is massive and it takes ages to complete a full scan. Well, maybe you should buy storage that's at least as fast as my iPad. Now, I'm joking, of course, but you know, that's how that works. Adrian, oh, I know you, Adrian. Hey, good to see you, Adrian. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Uh, <laughs> Jedi Micro, that's fine. Uh, Nishant says, so T-SQL techniques for Spark programming in Databricks. I have a feeling that you just reached out for random keywords and you're just playing buzzword bingo. I would like to build pancakes with JavaScript on AWS. You're just like randomly. You know, and seriously, so the problem is when you play buzzword bingo, when you grab the latest and greatest keywords, just random stuff, you're not going to find anybody who has any training about it because it, <laughs> it changes all the time. I want pancakes too. Um, the uh, Surly Dev says we have a cube that is updated nightly and refreshed totally once a week. Yeah, I do. you were young and you needed the money. Uh, Malik says check DB with physical only. Is it good? It's, it's not as good as the full blown check DB, but it's a start. Uh, uh, RJ says, what are your thoughts on Azure SQL DB versus on premises? I love Azure SQL DB if you don't have a DBA. Microsoft is much better of a DBA than not having a DBA at all. Microsoft does a much better job at backups, uh, patching, high availability, disaster recovery than not having a DBA at all. Now you pay for it, it's expensive, although it's not as expensive as having a DBA. So it's kind of a, a flip up there. 
Richard says, uh, any new thoughts on letting the UK folk buy your courses? UK has their own law that's identical to the GDPR, unfortunately, so it doesn't make any difference. Even though you've left you know, the whole Brexit thing, I would love to say here's a shining light is, that's a part of that. Uh, unfortunately, you still have basically the same thing. I'm working towards GDPR compliance. We're just not there yet. Uh, Nishant asks the same question again. Nishant, the hell is wrong with you? Listen, listen. Um, so, uh, scrolling back a little further, VTOL Freak. Oh, this is such a good question. VTOL Freak says, will the automatic indexing feature ever come on premises or will that stay as an Azure exclusive? So the way that they're doing automatic index tuning up in the cloud is there, and you can read the documentation. They say this, I'm not telling you anything secret is they capture your exact workload in Azure SQL DB, and then they replay it somewhere else doing experiments on the indexing. Well, if that comes down on premises, where are they going to do the, uh, the automatic testing? Where are they going to run these tests at? Because they can't do it over in the production box. So I don't know that they're ever going to be able to bring that down on premises until they implement some kind of idle job type thing. Because remember, they're changing the database when they're doing this kind of thing. I, I think that's going to be the kind of feature that they keep up in the uh, cloud versions, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, da -da -da. Ringazine says, I'm awaiting the email saying now GDPR compliant, I will buy everything. See, the, the trick with that, though, is that I have some stuff up in Gumroad, like I have the consultant toolkit, and I've done classes internationally every now and then, and y'all don't buy as much as you say you do. Y'all are like, Europeans are like, I have all the money in the world, I'm ready now, and then I bring it out, and you're like, I'm busy. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, Santi says, a small talk on indexed views in SQL Server would be really helpful. Unfortunately, SQL Server has a lot of restrictions, uh, like no subqueries. Yeah, the subqueries aren't really what they're for. Indexed views are really for aggregating performance features. I'll show you a demo. So let's hop over into here into Management Studio, and I'm going to close out all my other queries. How can I start tuning SSAS? I actually don't know because I don't know anybody who's using SSAS. It's so nothing against analysis services. It's just one of those niche products that not a whole lot of people use. And I mean, like I know people using it. I don't know people performance tuning it. Uh, so your best bet there is probably to go call a consultant. Not me, but you know somebody who specializes in that. All right, so let's go over the Stack Overflow database. And I'm going to start by dropping all my indexes. And then I'm going to say select, I'm going to design a query that I want first. I'm going to say, show me, I'm going to group together votes. At Stack Overflow, there's a votes table, and it holds exactly what you think it holds. It holds all kind of votes that were cast on different posts, so people can do upvotes, downvotes, etc. I'm going to say, go count up the number of votes that were done per month. Show me like voting trends per month. So I'm going to say, select year creation date, month creation date, creation date, uh, count star as total votes from DBO votes, group by, whoop, Group by, and I'm going to copy paste these two out, copy paste, order by, paste those two out. And then we'll call this as a creation date year, and then do 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 as creation date month. So if I don't have any indexes, this is going to suck pretty bad because that table is a little bit on the large side, the votes table. So if I go in and I look at the votes table and I look at storage, so this thing's about five gigs in terms of size, but it's got 150 million rows in it. Well, doing grouping and aggregating on 150 million rows is going to suck pretty bad. If I go and execute this query and you watch my CPU while this thing runs, the CPU is no bueno. My CPU is banging up against the roof as it goes through and calculates sums across 150 million rows. Now, you can index for this, and it's still not going to help. I can say, for example, create index, creation date, uh, includes, and actually I don't even need an include, on DBO votes creation date. 
if I can't do a regular old non-clustered index, so this thing finished, it finished after 37 seconds, but the 37 seconds isn't even really the whole story. The bigger story for me is how much CPU time this thing used. So if I say set statistics time on, and then I go run the exact same query again, when this query finishes, over on the Messages tab, you're going to see how much CPU he used, but he used four CPU solid for 37 seconds straight. That's going to suck pretty bad. Or in this, now that cache is primed up, he does it for uh, you know 12 seconds straight. So let's look at the amount of CPU time that he burned. He burned 46 seconds. So I'm going to put this over here in chat. So with clustered index only, Here's how much time it used. Now, let's go through and add a regular plain old non-clustered indexes, uh, or plain old non-clustered index on the votes table. Uh, David, um, if you go, the only place that UK votes folks can buy my content, the only thing that they can buy is a consultant toolkit. So go to brentozar.com and click consulting up at the top, then the consultant toolkit, and you can buy it from there. So. This takes some time, of course, in order to create this index. But all the index is, is a narrower copy of the table. It's just only got creation date and the uh, vote ID on there. So as we scan through the whole thing in order, it's still going to be an epic ton of CPU in order to accomplish this query. So as this thing finishes, because it's going to take some time in order to uh, build this index, I'm going to do an in, I'm going to write up an indexed view. So an indexed view, create or alter view, DBO, and I'm going to put a go in here. Uh, create or alter view, I'm going to say votes by date with schema binding as, okay, good, the, the index creation finished. Let's go back and try our query again. So before it was taken around about 12 seconds, but the ugly part was how much CPU time it was doing. It was doing like 30 seconds, 37 seconds worth of CPU time. Look at our time here. It still sucks. The time to do this is still really hard work. Building up the all of this data around by date is absolutely terrible. So this is the index alone doesn't get you across the finish line, but the indexed view can. So here's my view as select year creation date as creation date year month oops, month creation date as creation date month, count big, mean old SQL Server makes us uh, do that. Uh, welcome to the club, actually, uh, as total votes from, and I'm just going to go copy out that exact same syntax, copy and paste, uh, go, so this just creates the view. A view is just, whoopsie, I don't need an order by inside there. Uh, a view is just syntactical sugar that makes your life easier when you're querying something. If I go back and I run my query again, if I go look at just the estimated plan, he is still scanning the index on creation date. This view hasn't helped anything yet so far. But if I index the view, create unique clustered index uh, CL on DBO votes by date, creation date year, creation date month. If I go create a unique clustered index on the view, now this is going to take some time because what it's doing is it's actually writing this view to disk permanently. It's just like an index. So now, now that I have it on disk, if I'm lucky, if I've been living my life right, I can go run this select. And yes, yes, look at that. CPU time is zero, zero. Because now SQL Server, instead of having to hit the underlying tables, it's just hitting the indexed view. Now, what's incredible about this is that I didn't have to change my query to point to the view. That's right. I've created a brand new view down here and an index on the view. But as far as my users are concerned, they're still querying the base table. 
Now, there are all kinds of gotchas around indexed views. Like you really want to read the documentation on them. There's a huge epic list of things you can't do. The one that catches me all the time is no self joins. But when they're this much of a savior, when they make this much of a difference in terms of performance, I will take the restrictions all day long. These things are phenomenal, just magical. Now, they have the same price as an index. The more indexes that you add, the slower your inserts, updates, and deletes will go. But for specific reporting situations, just phenomenal. All right, let's come back over here to the chat and tackle some of the other questions. Abatsko says, one probably stupid question. Ah, oh, they're all stupid questions. Um, because we're on 2012 now, we need to upgrade. Can we install 2019 and continue to use the databases in 2012 compat mode? Yes, just make sure that your vendors are okay, like any databases that you have are actually being okay on 2019, because there are functionality changes. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Santi says it works wonders when a query is doing aggregation, but the biggest problem I face is when I have subqueries. Yeah, but subqueries could, I have no idea what the subqueries are doing, dude. That's why you go to performance tuning classes. Come on now. Um, Surly Dev says, wait, what? An index view can improve a select from a table, even if the select isn't looking at the view, but the same underlying table? Yes. Man, fantastic. Uh, and there, there are a lot of gotchas around with that, all kinds of gotchas around the version. Like Carson says, it depends on the version you're using. Even beyond that, even on enterprise, there are all kinds of gotchas. So you really got to read the documentation, but it's fantastic. Manny uh, from YouTube says, can you uh, explain about include clauses in non-clustered indexes? Go to my free class, How to Think Like the Engine. Search for Brent Ozar, How to Think Like the Engine. And I use actual pieces of paper to explain how indexes work, how includes work, and much more stuff than that. Ha, 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 ha. Ah, thanks, Mutant Amoeba. That's a cool name, Mutant Amoeba. That's actually kind of awesome. Uh, 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 Diaconera says, what t-shirt size are you? I'm a weird, I'm in between a large and an extra large. So it depends, like I'm, I'm not a terribly skinny fellow. It's hard to, to tell by this angle, but uh, plus I'm like six foot three. So it, I'm really weird teetering on the extra large versus large. If it's a free uh, shirt from like your company, then could you send me both a large and an extra large? I know it sounds greedy, but, um, but then if you're just sending me one personally, I totally appreciate it. That's very sweet of you. Just an extra large is fine. Uh, Chandu says, this is a basic question. How can I practice this? We'll do it. You, you just, you do it. You download it and you do it. Right? It's like practicing anything else. Um, Surly Dev says, this is some next level stuff. Got to rematch and make some uh, <laughs> proper notes. Yeah, if it's free, I want to. Exactly. Well, the only reason I say that is sometimes shops will send me like extra large shirts and they look like a tent, you know, like I could swim in it. And I'm like, dude, I'm never going to wear this. It looks like I'm wearing a sail. Um, Red Barrett says, when are the Renos our shirts coming? They're already out. If you go to my Twitch channel, they're totally already there. So... <laughs> We'll go over to twitch.tv slash brentozar. And if you go to brentozar.com and click on the Twitch icon up, up top, this is going to be weird because it's actually going to show me there. I just want to make sure I'm muted there. Here I am. It's like a thing in time. Um, you scroll down in here and there's my gear. I have like uh, hoodies, coffee, mugs, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so close out of there. Uh, coming back over to here. <laughs> Chan News says, uh, where can I get data and stuff? Go to brenozar.com. Go to brenozar.com. And I got all kinds of stuff for you that's totally free. Uh, G Surgeon, good to see you again, uh, says, I recently set a database to compat level. Da, 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 da. Uh, as a result, I had to leave the legacy CE. Performance got worse. Because da, 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 rewriting code. Oh, uh, so what I do with most folks when people go to newer versions of SQL Server, most of the time I go the opposite way. What I do is I leave the database at an older compat level. And then when I find a query that gets dramatically better performance on the newer CE, I hint the newer CE only because I usually get my in my experience most of them get worse and only a few of them get better but if you hit the other way around if you went to the new CE 
and you're hinting the old CE on queries, you can leave that in place as long as you want. It's not urgent. It's totally fine. Um, and the, the cool thing about that, the reason why I really like those hints is because Microsoft is constantly working to make the new version better. Why rework the code to get it to work on today's 2017 or 2019 if it's only going to get better in the future? Just bide your time. And eventually, you're probably just going to be able to yank the hint out and things will be fine. Jedi Mind Gorilla says the family's waking up and the coffee's cold. Good to see you as always, too. Uh, always excellent to see you. Uh, Manny says, what do you suggest while moving from Windows T-SQL to Linux T-SQL? The T-SQL doesn't change. The, the bigger question I'd ask is, what's the problem you're trying to solve? What do you think is going to be better over on Linux than it was on Windows? Because what's worse is not all the features are supported, and it's harder to get support. Uh, Bruno says, I have some problems moving jobs to Azure SQL using task schedule. Yeah, anytime you're doing scheduled jobs, you really want to step back and rethink how you're going to do them when you move to the cloud. Azure Functions are, I think, a much better solution for things like scheduled tasks. Manny says, if there are stored procedures with lots of different conditions. I don't understand what the question is, so if you can phrase it to the uh, in the form of a question, that would be great. Uh, oh, okay, Manny continues. Do we need to create indexes for all conditions? Oh, Manny, uh, go watch my totally free class, How to Think Like the Engine. So search for Brent Ozar, How to Think Like the SQL Server Engine. It's a totally free class, and I explain the starters of how you design indexes for different scenarios, and then I go get you started on uh, other uh, things along the way. Welcome, our Duclos. Good to see you. Uh, let's see if there's any others that I missed uh, scrolling back. Do, 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 do. Uh, anything else that was back? Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, a couple of folks saying they bought questions from Udemy. And they said, uh, Mr. Robot says, I bought questions from Udemy, but they weren't helpful. That's kind of been my experience with uh, all stuff on Udemy. Like it's $5 and it's $5 for a reason. Uh, Namat says, uh, uh, David says, when is the fundamentals of parameter sniffing? Tomorrow. Starts tomorrow morning. Uh, Nimot says, I migrated for, oh, Akash, thank you. I appreciate it. Very cool. Yay. Um, let's see. Uh, Nimot says, I migrated from SQL Server 2008. Tables have more than 150 columns. Any suggestions on speeding up the process? Uh, sure, absolutely. Consulting. But yeah, that's, that's exactly what I do for a living. Oh, thank you, Abuse Sys Admin. I appreciate it. Now, Spitfire, Spitfire, you're just now following me? What the hell? Uh, so <laughs> Abuse Sys Admin, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Manoj says, is there any way to identify which stored procedures or views are using hard-coded stuff like uh, in a where clause? Um, I, the bigger thing I'd say is, what's the problem you're trying to solve? You know, what, what is the issue that you're trying to solve and go from it that way? Don't go looking for problems. Sometimes when people learn about a problem, it feels like they just got a hammer and they're walking around looking for nails like they're going to go beat on something. Don't take the hammer and go looking for nails. Go find, <laughs> surly dev, that's, that's a good point. Now, go instead say, what's the problem you're trying to solve from a business perspective? If it's slow queries, go find slow queries. Uh, all right, let's see here. Uh, Bruno says, thank you. We're thinking about Azure Functions, Azure Jobs, Elastic Jobs, Logic Apps. Y yeah, you're right. With all the options, it is hard to choose. The thing that I think has the most legs, the most long-term worth, is Azure Functions. And the reason why I believe so much that that has legs is that it's a great competitor to AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is amazing. We Everything for SQL Constant Care was built entirely on Amazon Lambda, and it's the best decision we've ever made. It's just absolutely fantastic. Azure Functions is Amazon's competitor to that, and I, I, I haven't used Azure Functions even once, but given how good Lambda is, I, I would bet my farm on, a, on Azure Functions. Task scheduler, stuff like that, elastic jobs, step jobs, I think they were only temporary stopgap things until Microsoft could build Azure Functions. But now that they built it, I'd bet my horse there. And it's cheap as hell because you just pay by the millisecond that your query runs or that your code runs. 
Khalid says, Eric Darling published good stuff on having multiple TempDB files sized equally. Is it better to have multiple files rather than for one TempDB for user databases? So if you download my SQL Server setup guide, and I'm going to show you how to get it. So if you go to brentozar.com, just brentozar.com, nothing else. And then up at the top, you click on scripts. Just click on the word scripts itself. Up there, it's got my first responder kit, and it's got the SQL Server setup checklist inside there. I tell you how to set up TempDB, for example. And Eric and I totally agree. We're 100% on exactly the same page. That's how you set up TempDB. How you set up user databases really is much more involved. G generally speaking, if it's less than a terabyte, don't worry about it. As it gets up over a terabyte, it starts to ma starts to matter about the way that your storage is configured. What kind of storage you have? Are you in the cloud? Do you have multiple underlying spindles? Do you have groups of spindles? Is it a shared pool? And so forth. That, of course, is way more complex than I can give guidance on just generally speaking. But this at least gets you started on TempDB, which is pretty much a universal uh, piece. Uh, and Chandu says, we use Azure Functions. Yeah, very cool. Adrian says, running SQL on a virtual machine, does it make any difference if TempDB is on the C drive? Yes, because users can fill up TempDB. Any yo-yo can go create a table and screw you. If you want to talk about a denial of service attack that brings down your server, just somebody dumping stuff into a temp table can bring your server down if it's on the C drive. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Mr. Robot says, sometimes when I uh, create an index, it speeds things down. Doesn't it mean I need to have one index that covers all queries? No, watch my how to think like the engine class. You're at a great point where you're ready to start digesting the stuff inside how to think like the engine. And then you'll be able to understand what's going on with indexes. Manny says, a temp table or a table variable? Which one is better? Oh, I'll show you. So let's switch over here, and I'm going to go drop my indexes again, just so I can start from scratch. Then I'm going to ask SQL Server. I'm going to say create, well, we'll start with, uh, let's do a fun demo. So let's say I have uh, create procedure DBO, well, we'll say creator alter, because I'm going to change it a few times. Creator alter proc DBO USP search users by location. And I'm going to say location. Ah, that's, that's a crappy way of doing it. Let's do this. Uh, create table uh, locations, location name, and care spectral spark. Welcome to the club. 100. Insert into locations, location name, values, London, United Kingdom. I'm going to go insert that in and then select star from dbo or from locations l inner join dbo users u on l location equals u location morning order by u display name so then i'm going to say just u so what i'm telling sql server to do is go create a table with uh, and put lo london united kingdom inside there you know what i'm also going to create an index create an index location on DBO users location. Big Mike, oh, good to see you. You, you uh, Rockbiter, where's the name Rockbiter come from? That's an interesting name to have. Um, so uh, I'm going to create an index on location. Then once that's done, here's the main bulk of the demo. I'm going to go create a table. I'm going to put a row into it. Then I'm going to have SQL Server go pull stuff. Never ending story. Oh, nice. I'm going to pull stuff out of the temp table. What the key is, how SQL Server makes an execution plan is all going to depend on whether or not he understands what London United Kingdom is. Let's go run this and see what his execution plan looks like. Oops, I forgot to turn on the actual plan there. Let's go drop that table. Drop table if exists. Locations. And get you out of here. All right. Damn it, I still didn't put in the actual execution plan. There we go. So here is the big fun of the TempDB demo. 
with the TempDB demo, SQL Server said, I'm going to start by, uh, SQL Server always has a guy's voice because he's dumb and stubborn and he refuses to ask for directions. He's all, trust me, I got this, when he doesn't usually got this. He says, okay, I'm going to start by looking at this temp table here. I believe there's going to be one row in it. And I think I know how many people I'm going to find in London, United Kingdom, because the what he knows about this influences what he thinks he's going to find in here. This is a beautiful execution plan. Mwah! Because SQL Server understood exactly how many users he thought was going to come out. And going over further over here, this sort, SQL Server understood how many rows were going to be sorted. So he appropriately budgeted the amount of RAM. There's nothing in here about spilling to disk. Now, I'm going to do the same exact thing, but with a table variable. Here, I'm going to say declare at locations table, insert into it, and then I'm going to select from it. Same exact thing, but I'm using a table variable instead of Hunter. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Always nice when I get uh, subscribes. Very cool. So now I'm going to do the same exact thing, but I'm going to use a table variable. Welcome to the club, Bob. So let's go over and look at the execution plan. And oh, that's not so good. Oh, now we have lots of problems inside here. So SQL Server goes, I think I'm going to have one row inside this table variable. I have no idea what it's going to be. It's a variable. It's in the name. It could vary. Who knows what it could be? So I think I'm just going to find, a, I don't know, 65 people in London. And he's completely wrong. And then, of course, this has a problem when it comes time to do that sort. SQL Server also didn't allocate enough memory in order to do this sort. So the table variable ends up spilling to disk. Now that's bad, but it gets worse. So it gets even worse because what happens when I put multiple rows into here? What happens if I also, for example, say India and United States? So let <laughs> so certainly, Dev, I would love to do that, but my voice breaks out when I do that. I did an entire session at the past summit once with uh, Bob. Um, the hell's the name? Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan's voice. I uh, did the whole tried to do the whole session in Bob Dylan's voice, and it was only a lightning talk, which is just like six minutes long. And I, my voice was totally shot by the end of it. It was really funny. It was a lot of. I had a harmonica and everything, and a wig. It was really cool. So now I'm gonna try the same thing, except I'm gonna do three rows instead of one. Now the temp table. If I go look at the temp table version, the temp table version is again pretty good. SQL Server knew there were going to be three rows coming out of the temp table. Then he didn't estimate perfectly, but his estimates were at least pretty good. Yeah, I, I like doing that a lot too as well. Now, if I look over here, SQL Server allocated enough RAM in order to do the sort. We're all good. But now let's try that exact same thing over with a table variable version instead. So let's switch over into here and do this insert. Welcome to the club, Mokoko. So now I'm going to insert three locations into here and see what happens over with this. So, oh, hey, SQL Server, how many rows do you think you're going to find in this table variable? One variables, they just have one row in them. So then, of course, his rows are his estimates are now even more insane. Insane. He thought he was only going to find 65 rows. There were like 85,000. And so now, when it comes time to do that sort, of course, he ends up spilling lots of tables to or lots of pages to disk. So this totally blows table variables. They have bad estimates. Just a hot mess. So Microsoft was all excited. They're like, look, no, no, seriously, we figured out how to fix this in 2019. Things are going to be way better. So in order to fix it, I'm running 2019, mind you. In order to fix it, I got to right click on my database and go into properties. I go into options and I'm going to change my compat level from 2017 to 2019. This is where Microsoft so much better. Oh, it's amazing now. It's, oh, no, no. Table variables. We totally get it. We screwed up. We're going to do it the right way. Now, before I do it, as a quick reminder, here are the problems with table variables. Number one, SQL Server incorrectly estimated how many rows were going to come back. It only thought one row was going to come back. In reality, three rows came back. 
plus the estimate of how many rows he thought he'd find per location was completely smoking crack. Let's see how that works now. Now I'm in 2019. Let's run the exact same query again without touching it. And Ta-da! Suddenly, SQL Server knows that there are three rows in the table variable. That's amazing, right? Well, actually, no, it, it totally sucks. Because if you look down here at this, this was the problem that we were hitting all along. It underestimated how many rows were going to be found out of the related index seek, because SQL Server has no idea what the contents of table variables are. And as a result, he still spilled this thing to TempDB. So that's all bad. You know, it's, again, it's another nail in the coffin of table variables. You just do not want to use table variables. But there's one case where you actually might want to use table variables. So here, I've got a simple go declare a table variable. <laughs> Dang, I'm nowhere near it. Yes, it's true. Welcome to the club, Zeb. So here, I'm doing a declare. I'm inserting three rows out, and I'm getting a select. Okay, nothing heading up my sleeves. I do an execute, three rows come back. Let's now say begin tran and commit. So as a quick question, when I run this, how many rows are going to come back? It's not a trick question, just how many rows are going to come back from this? I'll let y'all answer there. Y'all are afraid. You don't know. Okay. So Northern Canuck is the only one who's brave enough to say a number of rows. The rest of y'all are terrified. Come on, y'all. You know how begin trans and commits work. You hit execute and you get three rows back. Hey, Paulus, welcome to the club. Thank you. I appreciate the subscription. Gabriel says six. Gabriel, you need to report in for training. Shashank, you no, y'all, y'all need some basic work on transactions. So in here, so I did a declare and begin tran and a commit. Three rows went in, three rows come out. That's how begin trans and commits work. Now, how about a rollback? If I do the same exact thing and I do a rollback instead of the commit, how many rows are going to come back out of here now? We'll see what y'all say. Nine. All right, so let's go see what you say. So some folks are saying three, some folks are saying zero. Some people are saying zero, oh, all kinds of confusion. Let's execute it and... Oh. Oh. Table variables ignore transactions. Just like everything else that's a variable ignores transactions. If I say declare uh, my name and vercare 30 equals uh, Brent Ozar, and then I say in here declare or no set my name equals uh, Bob Dylan and then run it, select star, and then I'll also select my name and go execute. See how it says Bob Dylan, even though I did a rollback? Variables ignore transactions. So if you didn't know this, this is another nail in the coffin of why you do not want to be using table variables. They ignore transactions, so the behavior that you're used to seeing with begin, tran, and commit wouldn't work. Surly does, but Surly Dev says, but a, a temp table would, would use a transaction correctly. Yeah, let's go see. Select star from locations. Then in here, we'll say begin, tran, and commit. Well, actually, we'll do the rollback. So we'll tab this out and then say select star. And now, yay! That works absolutely as designed. Welcome to the club. So the, again, this is another nail in the coffin of why you probably don't want to be using table variables. So I'll switch back over here for a second. So Gawabunga says, so why don't we deprecate table variables then? Why do we keep terrible variables along? And Vassal, I'm not going to answer that one during this webcast just because I don't have enough time to do it justice. Uh, but so uh, Gawabunga says, why do we keep table variables around? So let me tell you something. 
You know how at your office, your manager comes in and your manager says things like, hey, can you build a proof of concept of something? Because our main competitor has this other feature and we want this feature, but we don't have it. Can you just build a proof of concept? And then you work late one weekend and you build the proof of concept and you go, well, all right, here's a deal. Here's the proof of concept of it. But you got to promise me that we're not going to go live with this. This is only a proof of concept. I, I made this out of chewing gum and duct tape. And your boss takes it and goes, thanks, we're going to put it in the next version exactly as is. Bye. Well, you know how you go back and you're like, please give me time to rewrite it. I just, it needs to be fixed. It's not right. And your boss is like, sorry, we, we got this other thing we need you to work on now. Well, Microsoft is the same way. Microsoft has to ship features because people like Oracle have it. They're like, Java, Oracle has Java in the database. Quick, quick, you got it. We got to stop Oracle. Put Java in our database. And so Microsoft builds a proof of concept to something. We have Java inside the database now. Do you think it performs worth a damn or is reliable? Probably not. But they just need to check a box with feature compatibility with Oracle, just like they did with table variables. And so it's a feature that technically works you just really don't want to ship and rely your own code on it. Like G Surgeon says, it's a permanent prototype. Really, anytime you see a feature drop in a new version of SQL Server, you want to think of it as that permanent uh, pr prototype, something that just randomly, oh, Nikon, we're going to have a discussion here in a second. Uh, something that just randomly happens to ship doesn't mean it's a good idea for you to put out into production. So Nikon, one thing that I'm going to warn you about, and this will be the last thing that I'll tell you all before we bail. Never, ever, 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 ever state a fact in a chat. Don't state a fact in a chat. What you want to do instead is say, my friend told me. A friend of mine said that TVPs are great because the operator lets me pass in a bunch of things. So that way when you're wrong, and you're that way, when you're wrong, you don't look like an idiot. Yeah, Ringazine says it's a great, another great one. I read a blog post about, I want y'all to look smart. I don't want you to look stupid. So it's really important that you remember, anytime you're getting ready to state a fact, it never came from you. It was always a friend of mine said, or I read a blog post about. That way, Instead of when I prove how you're wrong, I don't pull your pants down in chat. I pull your friend's pants down and you can laugh about it while your face is turning red because at least you're not on the webcam. All right. So we are at eight o'clock in the morning in San Diego. My coffee shop downstairs is going to open up here shortly. I've already placed an order online so that my bagel will be ready for me and my pour over will be ready for me when I go downstairs. I hope that y'all had a wonderful time hanging out this morning. I always enjoy stuff like that. This is amazing. We have 97 people in Twitch. That's just kind of baller. More people over in YouTube, Facebook and all that. Now, so it's always fun hanging out with y'all and uh, having these kinds of chats. So I'm going to go head out now, go have breakfast. I hope y'all enjoy your Monday and I will see y'all the next time I go do a live stream. Adios everyone and I'll see you next time.